Hello and welcome to High Rollers, the Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition campaign here on both the Yogscast Twitch and on the High Rollers D&D Twitch. Yep. I am your Dungeon Master, Mark Sherlock Humes, and I have my wonderful set of players joining me this oh, week. Wow. Welcome back. Thanks for joining us on our second episode. We hope you enjoy it as much Happy as the first one. Uh, joining me, we have our players. I'm going to wait. Sam's going to cut to a wider camera. There we go. Hey. We have Kim Richards. Hey. We have Chris Trot. Hi. We have Rhiannon. We have, on the other side, <laughs> Tom Hazel, <laughs> Katie Morrison. There we go. And then a nice wide angle for us, Sam. Show us all together. There we go. Friends. Welcome, friends. D&D friends. D&D friends. Help me. Uh, <laughs> welcome. Uh, we've got another exciting episode for you today. A couple of quick things. Because this is our second episode, many of you might not be familiar with who we are just yet. So we're just going to run through. Quick uh, race class character name from everybody, please. Start with Katie. Okay, uh, I'm playing Ayla, and she is a wild elf barbarian. I am Tom. I am playing Kilek and Akla, a okay. Arakokra bard slash cleric. I got it right this time. Good. <laughs> mm. I'm Kim, and I am playing Nova, who is an Aragonassi, and she is a hexblade warlock. Hey, I'm Chris Trot. I'm playing a high elf, <laughs> Lucius Elenasto, sorcerer. <laughs> you got that. Mm. Well done. Hey, I'm Rhiannon. I'm playing Sentry, who is a Guardian Paladin. And as mentioned, I am your Dungeon Master. This is a completely custom homebrew world. There's going to be a lot of rules, a lot of things that aren't in the normal books. Hopefully you will enjoy it. Um, a couple of quick things to run through before we crack on with our game. First things first is we do have our High Rollers D&D Twitch channel. If you're watching it over there, you get loads of cool emotes. If you do have your Amazon Prime and you're not subbed up to anybody, please feel free to use your Amazon Prime over on the High Rollers D&D Twitch. The only way it helps support us. Without you knowing. You might not, you might yeah. not even know. I do. But you get a free one if you've got Amazon Prime. Check that out. You get loads of cool emotes. I'm sure people are spamming them in chat as we speak. Um, do that, please. There will be a fan art video during the break this week. What? Yay! Chris Trot, let me talk a little bit about that. Yep, there's a fan art video at the break. <laughs> sure. How can uh, people submit art to basically, it? Basically, we're changing the way you submit art because we want to make sure that you want the art to be in the video for the you know, foreseeable future. And we're going to use it on YouTube and we're going to use it on this stream. So please, if you want your fan art to be seen in the fan art video from here on, today we have scoured the internet mm -hmm. for fan art videos, uh, fan art in general. Uh, but yeah, please send it to highrollersdnd at gmail.com in the future. High res as possible, thank you. Put fan art or something in the title yeah. so it's and easy And also, to find. please include a social media tag of some kind that I could put in the bottom corner. You'll see. Some it's in the video, but we just wanted to call it out specifically for you guys, just to let you know that we are gonna be using it on YouTube, we're gonna use it in the stream. We wanna make sure that you've given us your consent and approval to do that. Uh, one more quick thing, and then I'm going to talk about our amazing sponsors. The other one is we do have some High Rollers merch. If you'd like to support us further, and you want to get some cool dice sets, you want to get cool t-shirts, I don't have them, Sam. There's no point coming to me. I don't have them. Uh, but we've got cool dice sets, we've got cool shirts, hoodies, posters. Uh, you can check those out. That's on store.yogscast.com, under High Rollers. Loads of cool stuff there. Yes. But last, and but certainly not least, I would like to thank our amazing sponsors. Huge thanks to our sponsors, D&D Beyond and Brilliant.org. Thank you. I've got a cool, I've got a little read that I wrote. D&D Beyond is the official digital tool set for Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition. Use the code HIGHROLLING on D&D Beyond. There should be a link in chat to get 25% off all digital items, excluding the legendary bundle. That means everything in your cart that isn't the legendary bundle, you will get 25% off. I had somebody bought about $200 worth of books and saved themselves $50. Wow. So that's pretty great. So if you spend a million, you get... That's right, Chris Trot, you've got it. Some uh, check the link below. <laughs> the other amazing sponsor is Brilliant.org. Helps uh, Brilliant.org helps you master concepts through fun, guided problem solving. D&D has a rich history of puzzles and problems, so boost your brain power with Brilliant. The first 200 users to follow the link in the chat, uh, we'll get 25, we'll get 20% off an annual subscription. And make sure you check out after the break because I'll have a little puzzle for you. Puzzles. You. Puzzles. Puzzles. That was pretty professional, <laughs> so wasn't it? Very professional. Puzzles. I feel like I really need to. You should sign up know, to Brilliant.org. I rolled an unnatural 20 with a 19 and one. That was easy maths. Well, Whoops. that was easy maths. <laughs> Do you know what else is <laughs> also really easy maths? Our amazing intro, which let's play and get the game <laughs> begun. Yeah. <laughs>
So, so, quick recap of what happened last time on High Rollers in Erois. You guys were, all for your own reasons, your various characters were traveling aboard a sky ship. Uh, one of the marvels of modern Erois made possible through Ethereum, a special resource. Um, the particular sky ship you were on was called the Sparrow Blade, and it was headed for the floating sky city of Gusthaven. Um, you had traveled across various different continents and you had left a port called Imixan and were traveling across the sea um, towards another stop-off point called Gold Throne before completing your journey to the Sky City itself. In the middle of the night, you were awoken by a terrible storm. Th flashes of thunder, um, peel, uh, flashes of lightning, peals of thunder, sorry, um, echoed throughout the ship and the sound of battle kind of shook your wake and, and uh, kind of drove you to um, take action. When you left your cabins, you met with each other as well as several uh, other passengers that were traveling alongside you, and you were attacked by mysterious masked figures that seemed to have some sort of arcane powers um, and attacked you in, in the aim to simply kill you, it seemed like. They had no objective beyond um, eliminating witnesses. Um, after this, you managed to explore a little more of the ship and discovered that in the keel, a creature, uh, a creature called a stalker, a remnant stalker, had been unleashed, had killed most of the crew, but to reach the kind of glide sails, these kind of parachutes, and escape the crashing airship, you had to do battle with it. You defeated the creature, although not at, um, not without cost. Uh, some, several of you took serious uh, beatings from the creature, um, but you managed to escape. Uh, however, a dwarven passenger called Arvel kind of was separated and drifted off into the woods. And you found yourselves crashed in a large valley. Uh, Snow-tipped mountains, um, kind of autumn, like trees are dying, like things are, you know, beginning to approach towards winter. Um, the air is very, very bitter, very, very cold. Um, and yeah, it just seems to stretch out before you. And that is pretty much where we left off. You guys had made your way to recover Arvel, this dwarven passenger, and as you kind of uh, tracked him down, you witnessed that he was fending off four uh, humanoid creatures that you saw from a distance um, that were wearing sort of ragged furs and leathers covered in sort of tribal kind of swirling pattern tattoos um, and appeared to be elven in nature. And we begin this week by rolling initiative. Oh, straight away. <laughs> just to okay. get an straight idea there. of reactions. Just to get an idea of reactions. Okay. You might not want to fight, but just so we know who is where. I don't know why I'm rolling, I've already rolled mine. Uh, <laughs> yeah, just do it for funsies. Ayla? Uh, 10. 10. Quill? 9. Nova? 10. Lucius? 14. Century? 17. Whoa. Ten. Mm. All right. So, sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's important to note the initiative here because the last thing you saw as you approached, you guys were making your way quietly through these kind of thick pine tree woods, um, but Sentry just happened to lean on a tree and as she kind of like put her foot down, you hear a large audible branch snap. Um, and you watched as these uh, four elves, two of them had been sort of like firing arrows haphazardly towards Arvel, who was ducked behind several fallen logs with what appeared to be a broken leg. Two more, however, had come around his side, flanked him, and one had shot him with an arrow, and you watched as his eyes kind of flutter close, and he collapses to the ground. This kind of stout dwarven fellow with all sorts of jewelry and gold on him just kind of collapses into the, the leafy ground. Um, sentry, what okay. would you like to do? Um, I want to peg it to Arvel. <laughs> okay, so you yeah. can see that there is like a kind of semi-clear opening. You can see that there are fallen trees, um, there are several kind of like large rocks kind of sticking out of the ground and then kind of clusters of trees all around. Okay. Um, and if we cut to the larger map cam, I'll just generally show you what I mean. Oh. Oh. He's got it. <laughs> uh, but you can see around the, imagine much more clustered trees, basically. Okay. Um, you can there it see, is. yeah. So around sort of like the edges, there are much more clustered trees, but there is this kind of large opening where there are these kind of very old looking rocks. And you can see Arvel is down over here behind what appears to be several kind of like fallen branches. Realistic. And then these elves have basically scattered themselves amongst several rocks, two of which um, have flanked up on his side. Um, so Sentry, you He's would like to run over. Yeah, I'd like to try and... We'll yeah, try if you and, uh, make it. Oh! At least she's dead. So, <laughs> he's dead. Yeah, so you just want to move up, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Well, all the way to Arvel. To Arvel? As yeah, so yes. wherever you guys as were. As as so, get. yeah. Let's count the distance. You could dash as an action, I suppose. Yeah, you can dash as an action. Yeah. So you've got 30 feet. 30 feet. Okay. So, so yeah. that's your movement, and then yeah. if you don't, if you just want to get to him, you can spend your action to dash, which is you get to move again. 
Yeah, I can do that, yeah. Okay, so you'll do that. It is difficult to rain to hop over the log, so it will cost, uh, so it will be like uh, 5, 10, 20. Yeah, so you basically yeah. get right over his body. Yeah. You can see that he's got this arrow sticking out of his side, and you can see it's a bleeding wound. Um, you can also see his leg. The bone is kind of jutting out of his oh, knee. It's like oh. sticking out of the side of his thing. He has roughly splinted it with like, a sh it looks like a kind of, piece of wood like a branch and he's tied it with like strips of like his shirt he's basically just tied it to his leg to kind of form a very very crummy crummy splint okay um, and yeah you reach him look down is there anything you'd like to do as a bonus action um let me see um so i think your lay on hands and things is a full action so oh, okay um if you go on D, D beyond you just tap on the little bottom one okay and you go to actions cool. action it should have all the things Let's you can see. do. Okie dokie, bonus actions. Um, I'm not even sure I have any bonus action spells. Healing word. Yes. Healing word. I could do protection uh, as a reaction. Yeah, but... so you can do that as a reaction. So you can yeah. position yourself over him, like if they try and attack him or try and do anything to yeah. him, you can try and defend him. So is that what you want to do? A sentry yeah, just kind of that, position yeah. yourself in. The, okay, so you watch the sentry leaps over this log. She strides up to the dwarf and basically raises this shield, which you can see is very, very immaculate. There is a some sort of like heraldry on it, but none of you would recognize the heraldry except I think Lucius, you made a check. You would probably recognize it as being Solvin, this uh, ancient kingdom. Mm -hmm. um, this, oh, yes. this this shield has the emblem of it, and she's kind of raising this up, and she's in a defensive stance over over Arvel, um, but you can still see he is unconscious. Yeah. Uh, after Sentry, Lucius would be the next one to go. Arvel! Arvel, no! <laughs> I'm gonna sprint over to him okay. as well. Okay. I think okay. full full like right, dash. Uh, and that's me. Okay. Bonus action blade ward on myself. Is that a bonus action? Uh, nope. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to blade ward. So as now <laughs> two of you have moved over, you can see the elves that had fired. They kind of look over in your direction and you just hear one of them. You, you're not really sure if the men or women, they're kind of covered in like thick paint that almost like blends in with like the, the kind of dark brown um, late autumn surroundings. It looks like kind of almost like war paint. But you can see they wear thick furs, leathers, their bows are very rough. Um, they have um, they have like not really short swords, but more like axes, like hatchets and things like that. And one of them just calls out, um, and you're a high elf, so you do speak elvish, but it's like hearing somebody in a really rough elven accent, uh, like- Cockney. Get away. He's ours. He is in our lands. Can I use my bonus action to respond? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a free action to speak, but you can only get a few s short phrases out. Stay away from my friends, you beasts! Okay. <laughs> Pull that out. Uh, so after that, I would say, uh, Ayla, you have, uh, I think, the highest dexterity out of everyone. What's your dexterity on over? 16 plus 3. You're 17, right? Okay. So yeah, I'll, I'll give Ayla um, the uh, Can the I advantage. see if they look like a clan of wild elves. Sure, from... give me a perception check. Yeah, perception or insight. <laughs> mm. Seven. Seven, <laughs> so you're like straining to look at them, but you can see that, yeah, they're kind of blended in quite well with their environment. From everything you can look at, they look elven. You can see like pointed ears kind of sticking out from their very rough, kind of very dirty looking hair. Some of them have got like thick dreads or like their hair is just like matted with like leaves and sticks mm. and things like that. And um, they still have their weapons drawn. They have them. Oh yeah, the yeah, two of them have got short, uh, no, all four of them have short bows out at the moment, but you can see they each have these two hatchets um, kind of tucked into their belts. They look very, very rough and yeah, they don't have any clan colors on them though. That's okay. probably the only thing you'd notice. Uh, I'm gonna walk out mm -hmm. um, and just say to them, look, none of us want to be here. None of us have chosen to stay in your land, but there was a bit of a crash. Don't know if you've seen it. A lot of smoke over there. Ha! You just hear like one of them like barks out a laugh. Uh, two of them, the two closest to you kind of look over and you hear, they're all speaking in Elvish. If, if you don't speak Elvish, this just sounds garbled like another language to you. In Elvish, she's just like, Air the F. Well, they look over and they're like, ha! You are in wrong lands here. These are ours. You can go, but we're taking him. He has stuff. He's basically like really rough kind of accented. They sound very, even the wild elves you know, these guys are talking really, really like just dirty and rough. Um, their accent is extremely heavy. 
Right. Hmm. Um, and you can see they're kind of like looking at Arvel and he's covered like all of his hands are covered in rings and he's got like gold like yeah. necklaces and stuff on him and his clothes are all very well made. And yeah, you, you've been around Wild Elves, like they've seen they something that, that they want and they're going to take it. Uh, but they, they gesture to you, they're like, you can go, uh, as they point over. Nova, unless you want to do anything else. Bonus no, action. Nope. not at the moment. Nova. Um, can I move up to... Um, just tip the tree out of the way. I just I can't see these guys. Uh, can I move up sort of like behind this tree so I can kind of support um, Ayla? So you want to be behind the yeah, tree? Yeah, behind behind the tree. So I've got like cover from here. the tree. Yeah. yeah, but I can okay. like pop out and just be like, phew, if I need to. Okay. Um, but Nova speaks Elvish, so I'm okay. guessing she would So you would can have understand understood. all of everything that's been said. So I'm just going to like take out a little pocket book, like yeah. a translation <laughs> book, and just like quickly look through my translations and just be like, um, if we if we give you his rings, will you let us go? We don't want to be here. Um, and also, or we could give you the loot from the ship. Give me a, was just like, give me a persuasion oh. check with advantage. <laughs> persuasion check with advantage. Mm -hmm. Whoa. 22. Okay, 22. So you catch the attention and you can see them all kind of like looking around. Um, and the two that were talking to Ayla are still having that conversation, but you're kind of calling this out just as they finish. Um, but one of the other ones uh, that was basically moving up towards Arvel on the other side kind of glances over, looks at Lucius, looks at you, and you've got quite like scrolls and books and you've got quite nice clothes on. You're covered in like colorful Some clothes decadent. and gemstones. <laughs> Yeah. Um, you will be the death of us. <laughs> well, you have, you're quite far away, but do you have like, you've got like navigation stuff on you? Like, uh, well, I've got the golden compass and I suppose. You've got your spyglass and stuff like but that. But I'm not actually out of the rock yet. Can they still see me? I haven't even acted yet. They're pretty, no, but they're pretty, pretty perceptive. They're probably, these not far too probably. Not as perceptive as me. Not as perceptive. Yeah. Still means they're Doesn't pretty perceptive. Doesn't cancel their sight. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they have eyes. I can see better than you. I can see better than you. Yeah. The, one of them kind of calls out, it's like, mm. You all have nice things. Perhaps we take them all. <laughs> you sit here and chuckle to himself. Um, anything you'd like to do? Um, I'd like to point out the way that she's saying it as well is very like book, broken, yeah, book like, elvish, like you know, very formal. Like, hello, my mother is a camel. You know, like, speaking <laughs> Silmarillion yeah, and stuff yeah. like that. Like, my yeah. age is twenty-three or whatever. Yeah. Um, Oname wa nova des. Yeah. 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 Okay. Watashiwa. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Aishiteru uh, yeah. Bonjour. Um, I would like to. I'll reply to. Mm. You can't reply. Okay. In about six seconds, okay. like you've said your thing. Can I ready an right? action that if one attacks, mm -hmm. uh, I will Eldritch Blast them? Okay. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so you're going to ready that action. Uh, Quill. Oh, in fact, no, before Quill, uh, the two elves. So. No. Oh, he's going to kind of scoot round. They just kind of reposition themselves and you watch as very similar to like, you can see Nova kind of readying herself, like kind of you kind of got like one hand on, on Tiangong's grip and then your other hand is kind of at the ready. You can see the these all of these elves now knock arrows and they tense. You can see them like not aiming them at you, but if they need to, they can quickly snap these bows up and fire if they have to. Um, yeah, you could probably say. Uh, one of them kind of steps more towards Arvel, and he's he is more directly pointing the bow at Sentry, and he's just like, move! Ours. <laughs> no way, um, is he? It's just like, mm. and like glares for a second, and you can see there's this kind of like standoff still going on. Um, Quill, what would you like to do? Uh, Nova, what's the deal? Uh, is this a, is this another fight? What's what's happening? Can Do you I... not speak Elvish? No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Can I reply to him? You can, yeah. You say you've got enough. Like you can. They want our stuff. Oh, that's probably about as much as with the other conversation. You're like, they want our stuff. Um, I'm gonna sort of peek out from behind the rock and put one hand mm -hmm. out, little burb hand, my only hand. <laughs> wing, claw. Uh, wing, yeah. I don't know if you speak my language, but we mean no harm. You can take, <laughs> you can take some stuff, <laughs> just not the him. I'm not translating. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, Arvel. <laughs> that's my oh. turn. That's my entire turn. <laughs> Does he get to ready an action or anything? No, Arvel is unconscious. Dead. No, him. No, I, oh, won't, I wasn't going to. to anyway. Yeah. Quillo, bro. Uh, the, I want to see how they act first. The other elf is just like, 
like when you say like you can take us, he's like, okay, give stuff. All of you drop things. Everything valuable, give to us now. Does he say in Elvish or? He says in common, like that broken kind of like, all give. Are we, are we still in initiative, I suppose? It's like, at the moment, like you can oh, see. What's happened to us? Yes. Uh, okay. It's just what we need. Oh. We're good, we can still hear us. Are we live? Live, live? Sounds good. Voice. Technical difficulties. Technical difficulties. Uh, yeah, it's a black, it's a black screen. Oh no. They can probably still hear us. They can but they still still hear us. They can still hear. Okay. Can you still use the there power of your mind? Like hey. Sam might just have to there? refix things. Um, we'll just carry on because we've got the podcast uh, to, to consider. So uh, you see the elves all tensing. Um, but yeah, he just is barking like he like gestures oh, no. to Lucius. Gems. All of them. Clothes. You absolutely will not get any of these gems. Do you want some fire in your face? Oh God. Oh. Please just give give him something. Come on, I I got nothing here. As soon as the the arrow comes up, the whole bravado thing <laughs> <laughs> just, just drops. He just gestures it towards you. This bow, um, uh, yeah. So at the moment, yeah, they they're not making any advanced movements. They are they are basically threatening and demanding. They're like, drop, drop, drop. They oh, look we, at you. Are we allowed to? Speak? No, they're like they kind of size you up, and they're like they're not going to mess with you too hammer. much. Same with Sentry. <laughs> Sentry and Ayla, they don't make any demands, but the three of you and uh, are, and they point at Arvel like, give us your things. I will pay for all of us to just go our separate ways. How much? Well, I have some coin. Good, all coin. All coin? All coin. Are you mad? Give well, you now. probably are. No, I'm giving right. you... It's because we're still in initiative because Arvel, you can see his like blood okay. is pooling out of him. Sentry, what would you like to do? Um, can I do um, cure wounds on Arvel? Do you have any spell slots left? Oh, uh, well, that's a good point. Probably not. No. Or do can you lay on hands instead? Uh, if you have any lay on hands left, yeah. Yeah, I've got. I've got all lay on hands. Okay. So you just kind of, as you start reaching down towards him, you hear the kind of stretch of the bowstring, and one of them is just like, "Stop, ours," like. <laughs> What are you doing? Well, he's, he'll be no use to you if, he, if he's dead, at least. It's like, he will be plenty used to us with dead. Good fuel for fire, and his oh rings God. will still belong to us. But he's our friend and we need him, so you can't have him. We do, I do not care if he is your friend. He okay. fell in our lands. He's trespassing. What are you doing? Um, I'm just, I'm just gonna hold my shield up in front of Arvel and I'm just gonna carry on. Carry on doing it. Carry okay. on, lay on hands. So, how much do you wanna lay on hands in by? Uh, can I give him five? Okay, five hit points. <laughs> so, you reach down and you, you plant the shield and then you plunge down and you see the man, the arrow kind of shoots loose. Um, but you can see it's a warning shot. It just thuds into the ground um, as you just reach down and you feel this kind of warmth flow out of your roots and your metal and stone, and you see Arvel's eyes kind of flicker open. The wound is still there and it's still bleeding, um, but you can see he's kind of got some vitality left. And he's like, Ugh, what in the blaze? He's like, you can see he's disorientated, but yeah, this wound probably still needs to be physically pack patched up um, and he's got a broken leg. But yeah, you can see he's alive for now. Um, so that's your go, that's your action. Cool. Um, at this point, yeah, it looks like the rest of them now are starting to basically uh -huh. take action because it was a new round, any previous ready actions. So just the warning shot okay. went off. Uh, Lucius, what would you like to do? Okay. Put your brutish birth down. And let's handle this like people. Oh. I will give you coin if you let the rest leave. Are you doing anything or just saying? I'm going to dipping into my coin and showing them a whole stack of coins. How much coin? 50 gold. Whoa, that's a lot of gold. Okay. <laughs> just showing them that. Okay. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Can I hold that much there? <laughs> yeah, so like, it's like, because you've got like the platinum hand. coins in as well. Like you can probably yeah. have like some gold and some yeah. platinum mixed in. Mm. Ayla, what are you doing? Do so you see Lucius? Like you see them like fire this warning shot. Um, you can see Sentry's Arvel is conscious, Lucius is holding out this money, what would you like to do? You're not gonna get a better offer than that today. Come on. Gold. And then we just wanna keep going and leave this land. Okay. 
why don't you give me a Intimidate or Persuasion with advantage because of Lucius? That's a good roll. 21? 21. Intimidate? Okay, <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> so you watch, as you kind of say that, they kind of eye up the gold. They lower the bows now. It looks like that they were literally about to engage, but with that, they kind of lower the, their weapons down. They kind of cast a suspicious eye. They look over. Um, Nova, are you doing anything different? Uh, oh, man. If they Sorry can, about this, everybody. If Hopefully. they can hear us, shall we carry on? Yeah, we're just going to carry on. And you can use the theatre of the mind. mind. Um, Sam's on this. He'll try and fix it as best as possible. Um, I will still ready my action to like um, blast if anyone um, moves any to offensive. attack. Okay. But I will just say things to the effect of, you know, again in my very translatory book, um, mm -hmm. how to speak Elvish. Um, yeah, I'll just carry on with what everyone else is saying. Like he'll like. pay for all of us, and we can help you get fuel from the ship if you need. They kind of chuckle. <laughs> We do not need outsider help. Already, already our people are at your ship. Um, but he just kind of gestures forward and you can see they kind of raise their weapons as one of them, this kind of brutish man that's been speaking. You can see he's an elf, but he's got horrible scars like over his lip and face, part of his ears being torn off. Um, you can see that they're covered in these kind of very pale blue tattoos, like uh, Celtic Ooh. knots and swirls around their arms, around their neck, almost covering most of their body. Uh, and he kind of walks up to Lucius, holds out his hand. Coin! <sighs> Very slowly giving it. He just like grabs your hands and <gasps> breaks it off. Stop it! Like, <laughs> bites one, smells it. It's very much real. I don't like, carry open, He opens up like a rabbit skin pouch and he kind of like shoves it all inside, ties it up. We had a deal. He like slings his bow, he's like, you have made deal with me. And if you wish to pass through lands, you will need more coin and you will need to convince Kara. And then he, he whistles, like it's almost like sounds like a bird noise when he whistles. It's kind of like a, like a bird shrill ch thing. Um, and you watch as the others, up. the others like <laughs> sling their short bows. They still keep hands on the hand axes though. And they basically begin to back off. Off you go. And they're just watching Could you. Could you point the way out? <laughs> we paid for your services. <laughs> You paid for life, not service. I think you just your paid people. to survive yourself. Your people, what, what clan are you from? He sneers a little. We are our own clan now. And then he just kind of turns away. And you can I see asked... that like, by like, all the scars and things like that, um, you don't think that, considering they don't have any colors on them, yeah. you're not sure if these guys are still part, they might be exiled. Like you, right. It's quite common for okay. like people that upset the clan to basically be kicked out um, and get, giving the impression of where they're living here. You're not sure if these guys are part of a formal clan anymore. Um, what clan were you in? I ask because I'm looking for a clan myself. Turns around, looks at you with a kind of like look of slight respect. It's like, they were called Kalan Rus. They are far to the east. But this is our land now. Be careful where you tread. Skylander. And then he looks at Lucius, spits, and then walks away. What was that name? Kalan Rus. Uh, R U S. A little apostrophe after the Kalan. Um, so at this point, you're out of initiative, gonna, obviously. Yeah. Arval, is, Arval is like holding, but he's like desperately trying to hold in blood. The arrow is probably nick some sort of artery, and he's like, ugh, ugh. He's like looking down at it, but you can just hear him, he's struggling to concentrate. I'm standing proud at the moment, and just looking around at the group. So after a few seconds, most of the elves... Um, Quill, you managed to keep an eye on most of them. Um, Ayla and I think Nova, you managed to keep a decent eye on them as well. But they do blend into the woods and then they kind of like melt away into these kind of like wooden autumnal trees. Mm. Um, cool, you can probably still hear them, but very they're moving very, very quietly. Okay. One of them kind of, even you can't follow where he's gone, like just seems to like vanish. So they're going away from us? Yeah, they're moving away. Okay, in that case, I'll step out from the rock and just sort of say to everyone, uh, I, I think they're gone now, are we? <gasps> we can take them away. <laughs> 
I'm, I'm, oh my god, it's okay. too much. You came in useful for once. Hold well on. Yeah. How much gold do you have? I might roll a constitution check to faint. Sure. <laughs> 16 plus. You managed to kind of you managed to kind of keep it together. Like you kind of still have that. You want to keep a good impression still. So you're managing to say, but you're like trembling, your hands are shaking, like... This is why Daddy said... Can I like, a hand on Arvel and a hand like on... <laughs> yeah, you can like, like holding... Up, you can the... like, <laughs> you, feel sexy, you feel this kind of like plated sort of like metal hand. Oh God! Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you, Sentry. Arvel, you okay? Uh, feeling a little woozy. Uh, bleeding won't start. He's like holding it to his, his body, but you can see it's a pretty bad wound. Um, Does anyone have any supplies, bandages, anything? I never did my first aid course. Uh, <laughs> Anybody can try a medicine check. Uh, well, mm. I think I would probably rush up and try to help him, sure. so I'll do a medicine check of 11. Uh, 11, yes. You manage to you kind of tear off, find some cloth, maybe part of the sky sail or like the glide canvas and stuff like that. Okay. You kind of shred that into bandages. And you begin tying it up, and you you probably have like a you know maybe not like a sewing kit, but maybe you've got like use a slight amount of healing magic just to kind of like keep the flesh pressed together mm. um, and heal whatever kind of internal thing got nicked. Yeah. Uh, you manage to kind of like compress that down. This bandage will stop him bleeding, but if he if he gets jostled too heavily, if he gets knocked down again, it, it, this could come loose, and he he needs either long rest like day's worth of rest to yeah. heal properly or a more um <clears throat> a, a, some a better physician to kind of like provide a, a more suitable binding to what it. what happened to the other three that were with they us? waited like they just waited. when you guys heard the cries they were like we'll wait over there okay uh, maybe the siaska cohort they have some healing capabilities uh, should probably go and check for them actually because yeah. those elves are not going to be easy to spot that's a good point yes yeah. Uh, so I guess we will go back Check to on, yep. on those three. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, buddy. Yeah, he's like, I'll hold, so you? you can see like, that with like the broken him. leg, like yeah. Do you want to carry him? I want to carry him. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what's your strength score? Uh, let me have a look. Ba -ba -da -ba -ba. I could probably carry him. Maybe. You could put him on your Seven. shield. I think the two of you probably <laughs> can. <laughs> the top. Even oh, weaker yeah. than Juta. Uh, Mm, 18, 16, 16 plus 16? Three, yeah. yeah, so 16. Wow. You, yeah, with your equipment, because like you've got your armor and you've got your shield and thing, you'll have to like literally put your shield like on your back or something like that, because you can't just carry him like piggyback. You'll yeah. probably have to like physically like fireman carry him, because he's a dwarf, right? He's yeah. short, but he's very wide. You can see he's got a bit of a gut to him. He's quite heavy. Yeah. So you kind of have to like uh, lift him up with both hands. I can hold your axe. Uh, if you, if yeah. you really want, then... <laughs> yeah, or you've got can like I, a, you've got like a loop I? for it and stuff as well, if you want can to. I, give it to Arlo, yes. I have an idea. Oh. You use the shield as almost like a trolley. You, you hold one end, he, you hold the other, and you put the dwarf in the middle. I literally said that. Then we Did you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool! <laughs> what a great idea! Well, yeah. 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 You've got her battle axe. I just want to swing it about a little bit. And yeah, it's just... pretty well weighted. Um, you can see that there's flowers. Um, she's kind a of good fighter, I trust her. Yeah. Uh, and then you've kind of got Arvel kind of over your shoulder. And you're, you're kind of, you're, you have to, at this point, you are moving about half your normal speed because, like, Sentry yeah. is carrying Arvel, but you have to do it very carefully because yeah. yeah. you don't want to jostle him in this, this bandage. So it takes you... Um, can we take, actually, before, can we take the rest of the sail that you took the bandage from? Can we take the rest of that? Or yes. what, anything, like... Mm -hmm. Just to it's just like a big that. cloth. Um, you can see that there there was some sort of like enchantment, which has faded now because yeah. it's landed. But yeah, it's just like you can begin cutting that up. Um, if somebody's got time, it probably takes you like 15, 20 minutes just to cut up, like using like a knife, like cutting shreds of these fabrics. It'd be um, useful to have into, some more. Into strips, yeah, sure, you can do that. So 20 minutes to do that, and then about sort of like five, 10 minutes, 15 minutes to walk back to the, the group where you were. Uh, you find that they have basically found like a small kind of like clumps of trees and they've kind of like nestled in and you can see them kind of trying to keep themselves as, as hidden as best they can. Um, but you see a dark skinned woman uh, wearing um, uh, with long dark hair. Um, you can see that she's kind of got like a very angular features, like a quite a kind of sharp chin and sharp nose. Um, and then next to her is a fellow with kind of sandy colored hair, bit of a, you know, maybe three, four days worth of beard growth. Um, blue eyes, and they're both wearing priest robes, which are in that are dark colours emblazoned with like little um, sparkling gemstones or like little crystals or like painted stars. And they're wearing these kind of robes. Uh, and then kind of nestled between them is this young girl who's wearing dark clothing, kind of like you know peasant girl kind of clothing, but she's got long dark hair and these bright purple eyes. And she's kind of stuck between them, like looking a bit bored, but also a little bit scared. Um, and you kind of hoist over. Uh, 
Sister Yusuf, the woman, kind of rushes up and is just like, Oh, you found him, thank goodness. Um, uh, do, is everything all right? Any, uh, is, is, is Siaska able to shine upon us any healing for I'm him? I'm afraid I'm, he may need it. I'm afraid I used all of it uh, when we were clashing, uh, fighting off the, the uh, assailants that we fought and the, mm -hmm. the beast in the, in the hold. I mean, I I can attempt to reapply the bandages if you wish, but uh, I mean, the bandages are going to hold, aren't they? Anyway. Uh, these are. It will hold for now. I just worry if anything violent is to happen to our friend. This leg is also, and she kind of examines it. I'm afraid that this is a clean break. This will take either magic or weeks to heal. I'm afraid, um, and it is far beyond my power. We'll need to get him to civilization at some point. How does the splint look on his leg? pretty rough like it could probably be used with somebody doing a better job as well like yeah. it's so easy for him to just go over in the wrong angle and snap it again and cause a lot of pain can we try can i try and look for um wood that would make a better splint sure yeah then... yeah you don't even need to roll for that you're an outlander you kind of spend a bit of time um scooting around you find some sort of like long branches without any kind of like you can Take your axe and something's going on above us. Uh, Seagulls. <laughs> yeah. You can probably use um, you can probably use Sentry's axe to kind of like chop down some of the, like the smaller branches into like proper sized pieces, um, and then with those with the strips that you took from the thing, um, yeah, I'd say that uh, somebody either you can ask Sister Yusuf to do it or one of you can try a medicine check. She, she's probably the best. You want her to try? Sure. Yeah. She seems to do a much better job than Arvel did. Um, she sets him down, it takes about an hour, um, so she kind of sets him down and she just gingerly takes off the splint. You can see that Arvel's in a lot of pain, but he's kind of bearing through, he's like <laughs> and a, you know, he has to kind of psych himself up, but she kind of sets the leg ever so slightly, like basically then attaches the wood on either side, kind of forms like a four-way splint and then bandages it all up. Um, and it's pretty solid. He's going to be pretty slow if he has to walk, but he can walk okay. vaguely on it. Okay. Um, Useful. Don't need to carry it, You can see that his <laughs> yeah. shirt is like all ripped where he's had the, the wound and it's been bandaged by Quill. He had such nice clothes, right? He did have nice clothes, yeah, but they've all kind of been ruined. They're blood stained. Um, the vest is all clean through. Oh, you look, you look atrocious, I must say. I fell out of an airship and then a bunch of wild elves, no offense, tried to kill me. I'm not surprised. What I mean, the so did I, but I look great. <laughs> Do you though? Sure. I don't think don't you've know. seen yourself recently. Oh, don't say that. Anyway, mm. at least they didn't take Evangeline. And he's like, hold, you can see the whole time he's been holding this crossbow like close <laughs> yeah. to him. He's like stroking it. Like, <laughs> Here, let me assist. No, no, not Evangeline. Mm. I'm going to apply mending to his clothes. Okay, yeah, you watch as like the threads kind of. Oh. And weave together. Some um, color. Yeah, like go little, into the fabric. Like the threads themselves kind of take on hues to fix the ones that have been lost. And you watch as the where it's been ripped and torn, it now begins to mend or grow new fabric. Um, he's like, "What? Well, thank you, boy. That's mighty kind of you." If only I could do that to your leg. Apologies. Uh, that would be quite the feat. Um, uh, this will need uh, this will need severe work. I've heard of priests that can heal wounds like this, but uh, we'll need to find somewhere. Dad, you'll know. I'm sure he will. I'm yeah. sure he will. We just have to communicate with him somehow. Where is Daddy? Gusthaven. Uh, does anyone actually know where we are, speaking of? No! Would I know that from the name that that wild elf told me, would I know anything? You can make a history check plan. if you want. Yeah, you can make a history check. Uh, 15. 15? Um, yeah, it kind of vaguely rings a bell. You don't know all of the clans out there, but... Uh, you've, Caelan Roos, maybe you've heard, might be on the continent of Suvona. Um, and they tend to live in a, you know that they live in quite a cold, bitter climate. Um, they're pretty sad, they're pretty tough folk. You know, wild elves in general are rugged and tough people. These guys chose to live in a very, very cold, inhis inhospitable area. Um, generally known for being very good hunters. Um, just the stories that you've heard. Mm. Mm -hmm. You know, Suvona, most of you, in fact, all of you would know except Sentry because you were not awake when all of this happened. Um, Suvona is the southeastern continent. Uh, no, sorry, southern continent, not southeastern, southern continent. Okay. It's kind of in the middle of the, the different continents. And does Gusthaven only fly around? Yeah, would we this, know this from that? Uh, no, Gusthaven is uh, what's on called something called the central ley line, which is a, a wind current that basically drifts 
across uh, three of the different um, continents, and it actually circles the entire planet. Unlike some of them, which kind of only circle one continent, With Gust Jubilee. Haven kind of goes across the thing. Um, it means that Gust Haven is very, very profitable because it trades with all different types of people. It doesn't just trade with the same people all the time. So it's very, very affluent. Um, <laughs> he's, he's so, so proud. Look at he's he's like, like, that's yeah. my hometown. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the seven cities. It is one of the seven sky cities, yeah. Gust Haven is one of the prime seven cities. Um, it does fly over Suvona. Um, it, it trades quite heavily with the, well, not really the capital, but one of the main kingdoms here called Gold Throne or Rooks, Rooksfield. I'd know that. Yeah, you would know that it trades with Gold Throne. You would have probably done business with the, um, the dwarf and human kingdom there. Okay. Um, well, does anyone know of any lowland settlements in this continent? I've... Gold Throne. Gold Throne. Gold Throne. Gold Throne's like the big one. Um, unless you're really natives to this continent, which I don't think any of you are, you would either have to make a history check or, yeah, some sort of like, something like that to figure it out. Like, would, there might be reason. Would I know more about uh, oh, yeah. Gold Throne yeah. uh, being a messenger? Uh, sure, give me it with an advantage. Okay, so history. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay, okay. 18. So you know a little bit about Gold Throne, sure. You would have like learned about it when you were training to be a messenger because it is a major. It's one of the major kind of um, civilizations of the lowlands. Like there are most most continents will have one or two of these kind of like rebuilt cities, right? After the Sundering, where everything was destroyed, many of the cultures and civilizations rebuilt, and they took old kingdoms. They might have taken old cities that were ruins and repaired them. They might have built new ones, um, you know, and rebuilt up new kingdoms. You know that Gold Throne, um, back in the pre-Dark War, was primarily dwarves, and it was kind of known, um, the area around it was a bit of a breadbasket, right? Like, it fed pretty much a lot of Erois. Um, it has, like, really fertile soil, um, very, very good for growing crops and vegetables and things like that. Um, after the Sundering, it kind of still retained a lot of that soil, and so the culture that grew up here is very farming orientated. Mm -hmm. um, it's a pretty affluent city, it does a lot of trade, it trades a lot with the Sky Cities for food and Ethereum, so it means that it's very, very, uh, you know, just well off. Um, the, con the, the, pe the, the rural villages around it are almost always farming communities, um, and they have something called the Harvest Guard, which is the, their version of like their, their watch, their city watch, um, and they kind of spread out across everywhere. Okay. Uh, you know a few settlements, um, it's kind of tricky, Gold Throne is the main capital, but the rural settlements you probably don't know the exact names of, but there's a lot of them scattered around. Okay. Um, yeah, and if you're on Suvona, you're probably, if you're on Suvona and Gold Throne was your next stop, you reckon, looking at the where you are, with your knowledge of cartography, you think you're in a place called the Bitterwood, which is the sort of Bitterwood. southern edge of the continent. Um, it's a very icy, kind of bitter area. Um, it's a very thick wood that covers it in a mountain range, known for having quite a lot of monster problems um, and kind of like exiled, you know, humans that get sent out here because it's not a very nice place to live. Great. But you know that there are settlements to the north, that going north will basically bring you to Rooksfield, which is the, the kind of area that Gold Throne is the capital of. Oh, okay, so we're actually not too far away from you're, potentially you're not too far. You're weeks away. <laughs> well, I mean, it could be further away. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You reckon that, like, if you're at the very edge of the Bitterwood, like, if you're on the edge of the Bitterwood, it will probably take you like a couple of weeks, maybe a bit longer, to reach Gold Throne itself. But there will be villages and settlements along the way. Okay. Um, I'd also say, with your knowledge of cartography, you spotted that there was a river flowing out from the mountains. Yeah. Um, that river flows into a large lake. Uh, and so it flows north and leads into a large lake, which is, you know, a week's or a week and a half travel from Gold Throne. So okay. if you follow the river, chances are you'll probably find settlements along the way. Interesting. Clearly you seem lost in your own thoughts. Ah, uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> uh, we're just thinking, um, this wound is not going to heal itself. Uh, we need to get it treated. Um, I couldn't catch a lot of what you were all saying to these elves. Uh, oh, elvish. Well, yes. Um, are we able to go to the ship to, to, to get supplies? They're already there. Right. Um, Probably a bad idea. Yeah. Probably a lot more of them as well. But I mean... <gasps> Daddy's back! Oh no. We need to go. We... Oh, no. I mean, how do much coin have... do you have? <clears throat> I gave 50 away and I've got some platinums and another hundred. How much? I'm whittling down. It's awful. Oh yeah, dreadful. 
Uh, you see out of the assembled folk, Sister Yusuf has kind of been speaking with the other brother, the, the kind of priest that's been traveling with her and the young girl. Um, and the, the brother actually speaks up, Corin, you know his name is. I don't mean to be rude, and he kind of glances at Ayla when he says that, but he's like, from what I understand and what I've learned of these wild elves, it's, we're going to have clashes with them throughout all of these woods. We probably cannot just keep paying them off forever. Um, they, <laughs> from what I understand, uh, this is a case of, well, yes. And he just kind of like awkwardly they looks around. They mentioned a leader, did they? What was the name? Kara. Kara. Maybe we'll just go to her and pay her off, and maybe all the little henchmen and hench ladies will leave us alone. Yeah, they're not going to do Yeah, that. I'm pretty naive, but in my teachings of the Wild Elves, that's not going to work. Why? Money doesn't make the world go around. Well, it does. It does for but them. It, but money is only going to take you so far, and you're going to run out. And then what? They're going to take your rings, and then your clothes. They're, gonna they're just going like, to gonna just look at you, look at what you're wearing, yeah. And they're just going to kill you and take it. Well, that's extremely rude. Yeah, but... I think the only reason that they didn't fight you back there is because you had the numbers on them. Do you think there's more? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. If they're at the ship, group, Plus, there will if be a that, lot of them. If that was only... They weren't even with the, the other clan. There's more than one clan in these woods. Oh, it's Jessica above. Uh, why am I down here? Because the ship crashed. <sighs> I think... What's the time of day? Um, it was early morning. It was super early, super morning, early when the, morning when the ship crashed. Okay. It was like it crashed in the middle of the night, sort of like four a.m. So for you guys, it's probably about six, seven a.m. now. So the sun is risen, um, mm -hmm. yep. late, late risen, but it is kind of casting sunlight throughout the the woods. And you can see that, yeah, these these are expansive woods. Like these are yep. thick woods all around you. It's only because Quill has this like rough map that he managed to sketch out from when he was up high that you kind of vaguely know the locale and and what's around you. Um, but it'll become it'll be very easy to get lost, and it's probably going to take you some time to travel through these woods. Quill, did you see any settlements on your descent? Uh, no, no settlements. No, the only uh, the only thing really is the um, the crashed ship. If we need to get, it's going to take us weeks to get oh, to weeks, weeks potentially. Um, I'm going to be even get sorcerer practice. Oh. What sorcerer practice? I have it on Wednesdays. What day is it today? <laughs> Uh, it is the second of Palace, so it's, uh, I'll have to come up with names for the days of the week. Ah. Palace Day. It's <laughs> the month, but yeah. <laughs> Well, you're going to miss it. How many? What well, practice is it you're missing? Sorcerer. So sorcerer? Yes. Sorcerer. Oh, yes. like the bzz, bzz. Yes. Sorcerer. Yes, so I amended to Arvel's clothing and whatnot. Sorcerer. I am a sorcerer. Sorcerer. Yes. <laughs> uh, Sister Yusuf I've probably got a book on it Looks at Sentry Guardian, what do you think we should do? Your people are known for being quite capable um, um, Well, I'd say we're in a quite tricky situation um, oh no. Arvel's really hurt We really need to get Arvel seen to Because yep. um, technically we're down a person So if we come into conflict we're going to be a man down. It's possible that the airship may have had um, some uh, healers, kits, and medical supplies, perhaps, but uh, I'm not sure. Not to mention survivors, potentially, maybe. Yes, I would be the only that. ones. Yeah. Well, I believe that Guardian, you told us that the captain and the first mate were at least still fighting when the correct. ship was going down. Did they have access to the gliders, though? Uh, well, I don't no. know. No. I don't know. They are perhaps a bit more seasoned on the ship. They would uh, know what to do, I suppose. <laughs> I just pictured them with salt and some paprika and things like that on them. Sorry, distracted, seasoned. <laughs> uh, yes. Um, we have two choices here. We so either go yes. one way, try and find a settlement, have some shelter, get some rest, or we can go back to the ship and probably die to a massive clan of wild elves. Your choice. So all this time has been going on. I've been reading from a scroll, and if anyone checks it, it will say something like uh, a survivor's guide to the lowlands, <laughs> what to do when you... But it's like, <laughs> it's real, like anybody, like you, if you read it, and you, if you read it, you would realize it is bad advice. Yeah, it's, it's like a kid's way. book, you know, like an illustrated kid's book, like, like how to survive. It's like if a bear comes up to you, lay yeah. down. It's, it's yeah. more like, yeah, if an owl bear approaches you, Punch pretend you to throat. like make yeah. yourself look really big, yeah. and you know that that just will make them more aggressive and territorial yeah. and stuff like that. Like, it's really backwards in most places. So according to my scroll, 
10 ways to survive the wilderness. Oh, can I see that? Uh, yeah, in a second. But it says that we should find water, yes. shelter, and punch owlbears owlbear in the nose. Owlbears? Yeah, because it throws their scent off, apparently. Oh, wow, fascinating. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to need you to not ever show this scroll to anyone ever. What? But it's written by... No. Why? So many reasons. It's written by... The name is very clearly some sort of high elven sort of writer, like some sort Somebody's of Somebody's never been in yeah. the... Yeah. <laughs> very obviously. Pictures are nice though, so just look at those. Oh, nice, and then they? Very well illustrated. Yeah. Um, so you go for a no. big jab or it's like a quick... It doesn't say... Maybe I could blast them with some magic so I don't have to touch them. I think Arvel that just work, yeah. groans. And I kind of wish those elves had actually got me now. Yeah, <laughs> air, airship. Okay, well, we do have another option. When I was River. in the sky, I did see a camp relatively nearby. Oh. Uh, I imagine, seeing the wild elves now, it's their camp. Oh. Um, I mean, if there's loads of elves at the ship, which has loads of supplies, then that's one option. Another is we could go back to the wild elves that just attacked us. How sure certain are you that it's wild elf camp? I really don't think that you're gonna be, be able to talk your way over again with them. But I mean, we could just take them down. That is I put it this way, they, they were willing to kill me because they had numbers on me. And if, if there's more of them than you, I wouldn't, I suspect that they'll just try and kill you and take your stuff. Yep, they're but, not interested in anybody. Well, maybe that's, that's maybe we kill them first. We could leave a trail of gold. Give them the reason to leave not, them out. not leave us alone. If they know who we are, we know that we're killing them. They won't come to us, right? But but we might attract more attention. Mm -hmm. They might yeah. come for revenge. That's Who's true. to say it was a wild elf camp, though? Because those it's elves true. were pretty stealthy. So surely they would have a camp that we couldn't see. Oh, plausible. Mm -hmm. I saw the treehouses camp, and they ran off in that direction, I imagine. Uh, they were heading to the north, north. yeah. yeah. They, they ran off in that direction. And it's, I, you saw it, but like, you saw it because you're really fucking good at spotting stuff, because yeah. you're a fucking bird man. Did it look <laughs> disguised? It, did, it looked or, like, like, yeah, you could see that there were like vague shapes of buildings, like some in the trees, some on the ground. Okay. But you saw like tiny plumes of smoke, probably from fires that had been put out in the morning, you know, like... Yeah. Fires that had died out and the smoke was... Just rising. I mean, it could be the wild elves, it could not be the wild elves. Either way, I did see that. There could be some supplies there if we are willing to ransack someone else's camp. So, to summarize, danger that way, danger that way, yes. death uh, here. And yes. we've got three weeks or so, or a few weeks or so to get to few weeks now. Gold Throne at the very least oh. to have Arvel seen to. So let's go get a Arvel, move on. Arvel looks up when you, he's like, well, it will take that long. If, uh, if we're where, I, where you think we are, then it will take that long to get to Gothram. But there's towns and villages along the way. Uh, there's a few su in southern Rooksfield. They'll see to us, I'm sure. Arvel knows. We'll just well, follow I'm, Arvel. I am from Suvona, so... Well, oh. What did from, you say? I'm from Gothram. I was being shot by elves. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know if you have noticed, but... And he, like, gestures at his wound that is, like, wasn't exactly in a talking mood till now. What a wonderful turn of events you've landed in your homeland. Oh well, yeah, sure. I was kind of hoping to go to Gold Throne, though, not we'll land in the right middle away. of the damn bit of wood. Well, have you been I mean, here before? No, that's the thing. Most folks don't come down this way. Most, uh, the only people that will come into this place would be either people who are desperate to get away, people looking to kind of set out on their own, or people looking for trouble. This is ain't this ain't no yep. fun. This ain't no fairground around here. And on that note, those guys are mm, potentially exiles, so they're probably even more aggressive. Harvest Guard have plan. a lot of Harvest Guard have a lot of problem with wild elves around here. You need to you need to watch yourself if we go to civilized places, Missy, because they might not take too kindly to you. I mean, I've met you. I'll vouch for you. You saved my life, but. Folks around here, wild elves, they just come in, they take what they want, set fire to farms. People don't take, well, people are real protective around here. Who's so. losing the name? Yeah. Wild. Oh, thank you. <laughs> for, for your observation. Helps. Thank you. Can we move? Hi, elves. Yes, please. Sure. Well, we need a direction. Are we going to the camp? Are we going to the, the ship? Are we going to we the river? We have Nova said, death, death, pick one, go. Ooh. Which way do you think uh, Gold Throne would be? Because I'd quite like to get there too. Yeah, yeah. Me too. Well, I mean, we need to follow the river. We would probably find a settlement. The river's to the to the east, uh, but we have to pass this 
a big mountain, so we'd have to go around that too, past the camp. So These the all camp sound awful. Start walking, it's worth then. a try. Let's just, just. Okay. Right. Just so you guys, off. so where are you? Where would you like to go? Point to me on your little map there, little Tom map Hazel. That... Well, uh, have we decided then the camp or the, or are we just walking? I guess towards. Gold Throne, so east. Towards Gold, we're just walking towards just Gold walking Throne. Just walking towards, look. That's north, right? Walking towards It's, it's just settlement. north, yeah, so we're... So if you pass me your map, we're currently on the southernmost part of that Let map. Let me just draw a little note here. Um, <laughs> and yeah, basically to the north of us is the way to Gold Throne. Around the mountain was the river. There's and on the edge of the mountain, the mountain. was and the camp. I've drawn the direction towards Gold Throne for you. Yeah. Yeah. That way. North, yeah, <laughs> that's, that's all we got. So we can just walk north until something happens, if that's what you want to do. I'm going to stand behind Sentry like a shadow. If we go that way, we'll, we'll kind of pass the ship. Maybe you can sort of see if it's worthwhile. That's true. We could see what the ship looks like, I imagine mostly destroyed and covered in elves. I'm sure it's attracted a lot of attention. Maybe we could use that <laughs> to in <laughs> avoid that entirely. Okay, well, let's go to the river. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm hearing two different things about where you want to go. <laughs> this half is saying go to the river, and then I feel like this half is saying just go north past well, the edge. This one of... is saying like nothing. I don't, I've just got a map. <laughs> I feel like we have to, if there's mountains in the way, we can't really We'll just skirt around it. We, need we, we have to skirt around the mountains, which yeah. is going north regardless. You did see so. some caves on there as well. I did draw them on. Yeah, there. Oh, I thought that said camp. No, that's a cave. That's a camp. It says... <laughs> <Wait, laughs> he, he You're drew, a cartographer, guys. He drew a little camp, fire. Cave. Yep. All the same thing. <laughs> I'm sorry I'm not an artist. We have an alternative plan now. <laughs> What's that, Quill? There's plan. a cave we in the mountains. Doors. A cave? I, I don't know what's in what there. What are we, a bear? Good point. I could not be held up in a cave. Why not? You can stay in the woods then and die to... Okay, I'll go to the cave. That's not not a problem, actually. Any are at least shelter, foraging. if anything else. True. Good. Good. How good? Very good? Well, I can feed myself, thanks. Could you feed one, two, three, this many people? Could I feed that many people? <laughs> yeah, let me get a player's handbook. Okay. <laughs> I because think you can feed up to six. We so could. not the whole... Not the whole group. group. Does Sentry need to eat? I don't need to. Sentry that. doesn't need to eat. We could just get to the river, I still find some feed, food like, there, two people. Yeah. and then just follow the river until we find some kind of settlement. Is anyone hungry? Does anyone want food? Because I will hungry. go find... Okay. Yourself and up to five other people, so six people total, including yourself. So I can't feed everyone, but... So you, can do, you can do four of you, and then two of the others, and then two would be without. But you might also have, like, if you've got things like Explorer's Packs, you guys might have some rations and things already. Um, you might have water skins. Let me see. Water skins will generally last you a day before you need to like fill them up unless you want to ration yourselves. Got a scroll of pedigree. What? <laughs> Nothing <laughs> useful. I have I've got a scholar's pot. <laughs> <laughs> I have a little bag of sand. <laughs> you can cook. I've got a bag of dirt. I can eat the sand. <laughs> if we get flooded. I'm gonna jar it. And then Sentry <laughs> is just like, I don't need to eat. I'm fine. <laughs> I can eat. I don't need to. That's useful. Yeah. I like that. That's, Sentry. That's useful. <laughs> Sentry. What? When you put food in, where does it go? I don't put food in. You don't? No. That would be a waste you don't need of food. it? I don't need food. Oh, fantastic. I can mimic the act of eating if it makes you feel That's more comfortable. Yes, absolutely. That's a waste that. of other people's food. No. When we sit okay, down I won't do that. You can I eat Lucius's you... food. I get, what about, uh, is Arbol uh, okay? Does he need food? I would like some food. Yes, please. Oh, I can give Arbol my food. Rabbits? Uh, you're not I, I worry yet. about us sitting and standing yeah. around out here. Yeah, let's yeah. move. Let's get moving. What's the plan, Quill? We're going to go north. We're going to avoid. Actually, hold on a minute. We don't actually know your name yet. Quill. Quill. Well. No, but Kim speaking here. Okay. Have I ever not ever said my we, name? You haven't actually said your name, not in episode zero, not in last week. I'm pretty sure you haven't. Like, everyone else has introduced each other. So I guess every time anyone's been talking to me, they've just birdie. been saying they've my name. Oh, literally just called you Birdie. Well, no, yeah, he called you Birdie. The yeah, whole everyone's time. been calling you Birdie and Birdie. Yeah, I said Quill. Birdie. Yeah. No one's asked. Aww. <laughs> Um, so the plan is, no, we'll go not. this way, <laughs> and I'm pointing north, okay. uh, the ship will be to our left, uh, the cave will be to our right. Okay. We could scout out from afar, potentially, just to see what they're like. Sure. 
If we keep go, if we, we can keep going north, scout around the mountain, if we see a camp, we've gone too far. It would sound good if, uh, yes, if we head on our way and then perhaps you all could scout out and I, we will keep an sure. eye on Arpo for you. Oh, thank you. Good idea. Very nice. Let's do that. All right, so you want to head to that midpoint between the cave and the airship yes. and then scout out. Okay, yeah, which so one would you like to check out first? Um, well, I suppose... Well, has, has the ship created like a large clearing or well, like... Just tell me which yeah. one you want to go to first and then I'll, I'll let you know some more details. Um, I guess we would uh, have a look at the ship the first. Because the cake might lead So the first thing is making your way there, I need you to choose somebody who's leading you through the woods to avoid you getting lost um, to make a survival check. Uh, well, you may assist you, if anybody wants to try. Uh, Quill I'm, I'm kind of navigating. Not yeah. us okay. too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, is anybody going to attempt to help Quill, or are you I just? I can help. Okay. I've... So, can you make a survival check for me first? I think I would. Yeah, I think I would be asking Isla oh, to uh, no. help and things like that. And like, <laughs> you've seen this tree before, Seven. right? <laughs> Seven. <laughs> uh, Corin will try and help. Um, he I actually guess? seems to be. Yeah. Uh, so you, I was going to say, you have advantage because oh. um, Ayla is like trying to help, but you're used to a different style of wood, and you often just kind of stalk off on your own and forget to come and tell him. Like you're like, <laughs> oh yeah, this yeah. is interesting. <laughs> so is this survival? Sorry, survival with advantage. Uh, unnatural twenty. Okay. So um, Ayla's kind of off doing her own thing, like wandering around, but Corin is kind of like he kind of walks up beside you, and he's like. Oh, I, I don't think we've properly introduced. I'm, Cor I'm Brother Corin of Siaska's Church. Oh, I am. Um, I'm Kilikad Kalar uh, 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 from Hesper's Church, I suppose. Oh, um, you're one of the airy folk. Oh, uh, well, uh, uh, possibly. I mean. Oh, sorry. That is uh, sorry. My apologies. That is what we call um, followers of of uh, Hesper. Uh, follower is a strong term. Um, I believe I've had some message. Hmm. Uh, but I don't really know what to make of it just yet. <laughs> he kind of chuckles a little bit. He's like, believe me, I know how that feels. Um, Siaska is wonderful, but sometimes the messages and teachings of the churches can be confusing. Uh, but yes, and he kind of gestures. He's like, I don't know much about the woods, but I've read a, a few books and things like that. And it does seem like he gestures to like a few things like this looks like an animal trend. I think this should be a fairly safe way to go. And like, you know, with his help, you kind of manage to keep yourself on a rough track. And, oh, cool. you know, he helps like, he shows you a few things, like he uses like some wind. He like checks the wind direction, and you, between you, manage to kind of stay on track, nice. um, and you don't lose any time. So you manage to make your way there. You don't get stuck in any difficult terrain. You manage to keep onto a fairly decent track, and it takes you probably about two hours or so um, to reach up to a certain point where, just on the edge, you can see now. Uh, huge chunks of this forest have been cleared out by the falling ship. The ship has split into three sections. Um, you can see that it's kind of broken at the, the bow, the stern, uh, which I think is the back and the front, and then the middle section. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of scattered everywhere. And it's not really left a crater as it like upturned earth, like it's kind of dug through the earth like a big plow. It's just kind of gone and thrown earth all around it on the, on the side of it. I mean, you can see that there is no fire. There's not like anything's on fire or burning. Rather, it's just been shattered and broken all over the place. Okay. Um, and you can just vaguely see that in the distance. You're not close enough really to see any details. You can just vaguely tell that that's what's happened. There's not really a crater, but it is pretty open. Like the ship itself has like pushed and thrown trees to the side as it fell. Is there a lot of uh, debris sort of scattered about? Lots of debris, like varying from what appears to be parts of the deck um, parts of the the the, under, the the passenger chambers, cargo, just everything scattered around. It looks like quite a large area. If you wanted to like search through it, it'd take some time. Um, um, but you can't again make out the exact details. Yeah. So if there are any creatures there, you're not sure you'd see them just yet. Okay. If you get closer, you would be able to. Um, Lucius, I don't think we're going to get your daddy's trunk back. Oh, it's quite robust. Uh, no, that's the, not the problem. It's um. The, the the crash it's 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 a wide area it will take us days to find even just one trunk in this entire was that for the chef? valley <laughs> it's it's a very colorful bag if it helps what Can was I in it be keeping an eye out for uh, the wild elves now that i know what that's what their passive passive like. perception is okay. so your passive perception is well, like your would... like constantly keeping an eye out if you want to be like no i want to walk stalk around and see if they're sneaking up on us but in general, your passive perception will just be a general, like, keeping your ears and eyes open. But unless you want to, like, stalk off into the woods and be like, no, I want to ambush these guys if they come after us, then you can make different checks. Hmm. 
How valuable is that? Oh, very, very. Is it irreplaceable? Oh, yes, yes. What exactly is in the chest? Oh, it's just business. Just you business? You wouldn't like what? Yes. Is it worth all of us risking our lives trying to find it? Um, well, I'd be very grateful. How, you how can grateful? No. You'd be handsomely rewarded. We've already had to traipse through sewers to try and get that freaking chest. Yes, what's another little skirt no. around an airship crash? No. He offered money. Yes. Daddy will pay you handsomely. What's in the chest? Prototypes. What kind? Prototype cages. Cages? Yes, we were on our way back. Well, Daddy, Daddy wanted me to go on my first airship ride, and I was very excited, and I was like, yes, Daddy, I will go on this airship ride. That sounds fantastic. Also, I get to see some other towns and places. I've never left Gusthaven before. This is fantastic. But yes, he gave me responsibility for this bag uh, to reach its destination. Is Daddy going to be really mad if you don't You'll bring it? He'll be very cross with me, yes. What kind of prototypes? What is your family invested in? What, what are you, you don't know about the Elanastos? Oh, well. I'm guessing not. I guess everyone looks around confused. Nope. <laughs> you would have heard of them. Oh, would I? Ooh. Yeah, because you, again, Sky Cities, oh, yeah. you do a lot of work with them as a messenger. The Elanastos, you know this, uh, they build um, Ethereum, what's called an Electrum cage. And it's basically like a cage made of a mix of silver and gold. Um, and it's designed in a certain way that it holds an electrum core. And when those are dangled from sky cities as they pass through clouds, they gather Ethereum, they gather the magical residue of Ethereum and it crystallizes. Mm -hmm. um, and these cages have to be enchanted and they have some ways of being made. And the Elanastos are one of the high elven noble families that make them. Okay. Um, and With so they are fairly, fairly rich. Um, they're not the most cutting edge family in the world, but you would know that you know, they're a, they're a fairly big deal when it comes to it. Yeah. Would Nova okay. know about that, given that she's like fairly technology... Yours is more slicing. planar interest. Yeah. This is more like Sky City stuff. I guess stuff. this is like physics. Yeah, this is more... No chemistry compared to... And it's more like very specific to the Sky Cities. Yeah. The, 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 the way that Ethereum and stuff works is very sensitive cool. to them. Your interest is more in things like planar magic and maybe more like the actual, like the cradle and the, and the, the stars. Astrology. More than, yeah, this is like business more than... Yeah. Business. Um, and Century, you've never even heard of Ethereum. You've mm -hmm. never heard of... Like, this is all... And, and uh, at one point, Sister Yusuf kind of comes and is like... A guardian, I want to make sure that you are all right. You asked some um, questions the last time we spoke, and I just want to make sure that you are, are you all right? All right. I imagine it was quite a lot of information to take on at one time. Um, yeah, no, it's a lot of information to take on. I can try, try my best to try and find Solven again. I'm sure we can search for it at a later stage. I, I um, believe it's still there. Well, uh, what I could say to you is um, the Sky Cities, uh, they were lifted by Hesper, the god of, of winds and magic. He lifted them into the air and set them adrift. Many of them are old cities. Many of them are still from before the Sundering. And many of them have libraries and they have scholars there that would, well, if anybody is going to know of your, of your city, of your home, it would probably one of, be one of the sky cities and their libraries. And I do think that, um, that that might be the best way to find your answer. And I, I Siaska may be gone, but her divine power still lingers and, and I hope that it travels with you wherever you go. Uh, she just kind of like, kind of just like pats you on the shoulder and just kind of like gives you a sort of nod and it's mm. like, and if there's anything we can do, please let me know. Thank you. She just nods and gives you a quick like little nod. Cool. So how mad would your dad be? He'd get into a strop for at least a week and I wouldn't have any, uh, I'd be housebound. And that'd be awkward. Grounded? Yes, housebound. We don't like to use the word grounded. It sounds so barbaric. I've been there. Um, that's like us. We are, we're currently grounded because we're on the ground. Oh, that's true. Going, yes. Yes. We're all grounded. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Oh. Dear God. We're grounded. But surely you would be happy that you had... <laughs> that was a joke, Sentry. Very good. <laughs> I'm, surely you, Is that you, correct? It yes. is correct. Look yeah. how we all laugh together. Your human module is working. Uh, uh, that's Wonderful. good to know. I you see Bala, this quality. kind of like very quiet teenage girl, that's kind of smirking, like, she's kind of like, yeah, that's pretty funny. <laughs> but surely your father would be happy that you're alive and not dead? Yes, yes. So he could he make more... He does place value in the lives of people. But he could make more prototypes, surely? 
well, this prototype took a long while and a lot of money to make. I mean, do you and have... And it's not something he'd usually do. Do you have it's any all about tradition. Do you have any blueprints on you? I could try and make a new one. Blueprints? Sketches on what I'm it not... looks like? Well, I'm just... Diagram? Any notes? Oh, they're probably in the box. Uh. Useful. Uh, well... We could get some supplies from that ship, but... I was thinking could. that the ship will have food and water and such things. Look, my daddy is very clever and he understands the Elanasto business. I'm sure this airship crashes now and again throughout the centuries of the Elanastos and there would be tracking, people would track, like your, your kind would probably know the airship routes and my daddy would know that we're crashed and come save us any moment now. Well, not if the elves wow. take everything. And so your plan is we stay here and wait? No, 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 I'm sure they'll come and pick up the package. Okay. We don't have to worry. That is some wishful thinking. I'm, yes. If the elves mm. see a very colourful case, I'm sure they'll take it. It's robust. Yeah, yeah do we know what, what, what does, does his luggage look like? Does it look as well, ridiculous as yeah. super it's, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's a very thick trunk, like very well made, like metal But is it all covered reinforced. in gems and everything? It is not, I wouldn't say it's probably covered. If it's, the, if it's your dad's case, it probably is quite nondescript, but it has... Um, a symbol of a kind of like a pyramid trapezoid shape mm -hmm. that looks like a cage of made of solid metal kind of stamped onto it mm -hmm. um, and it is painted. It, it looks expensive, like okay. it would look That's, expensive. Yeah. It's to be shown at a pitch basically, yeah. something like, whoa, yeah. look at this. Uh, so it's something young, that people will definitely go for. They definitely they notice. It. Bespoke. The, <laughs> the young girl kind of pipes up and she doesn't speak that much but she kind of like looks up at the group and it's like, uh, another thing, oh. um, well, what happened to the people that tried to attack us? The Guardian said that there were more on top of the ship. If they're still there, we shouldn't go anywhere near that thing. They, they were really scary. That's yeah. true, they were, yeah. They were from the Court of Shadows. What is this? The sister looks at you and is like, well, they are more than likely part of the remnant. Uh, and what business they had on our ship, I do not know. But, um, yes, I wouldn't... Oh. It would be interesting to know why they were after us or why What's they the came after the ship. How important do you remember are these Callus's, Do you remember when Callus Starbane attacked? He brought his Court of Shadows with him. The Dragonborn. They fought for him. No, this is... wrong. Just clarifying. Dragonborn didn't fight for him. Wasn't it? No, nope. Dragonborn arrived before and warned that he was coming. The Dragonborn are allies of Eros. Just a quick thing. Would I know about... Um... Starbane. I mean, everybody knows, like, the general legend. Like, everybody that isn't Sentry and Nova would probably know the basic legend, which is this. Uh, long, long time ago, Dragonborn oh, yes, came down yeah. from space. Literally, Dragonborns in crystal and metal ships landed on the planet. Um, they thought that they were, you know, that they came to attack, but they basically revealed to the gods that they were here to warn them that a tyrant, this kind of evil figure called Callus, was coming. Uh, this guy arrived basically with more of these kind of metal ships from space and thousands of hobgoblins and mind flayers and all sorts of horrible creatures. Were they new to Eros, hobgoblins and mind flayers? Yeah, they came down with the, they the ships. They came, oh, okay. they came with cows, demons, fiends, all of these kind of things They're were part aliens. of his army. Okay. And they basically, he basically turned up and said, I love this planet, I love what you've done with it. Give me half the people <laughs> and I'll leave the rest of you. And Siaska and the gods said, no, these are ours, we're their protectors, you're not taking them. And a big war happened. Uh -huh. uh, at the very end of the war, Callus tricked the gods and all of the people of Erois into a battle that they thought they could win. And during that battle, he revealed his true power, which was far more than anybody was expecting. And he killed Siaska. Siaska's divine energy was scattered and it formed something called the Cradle, which is a barrier that prevents ships and planar travel reaching Erois. Okay. So it means this the is dragon, beyond centuries time. This is far beyond centuries time. Century was shut down before this happened. Mm -hmm. um, but for the rest of you, you know that the, it means that things like the Dragonborn ships can't leave. It means that things like the Tieflings and Asimar, who were people that came via planar magic, can't leave. Um, but it also keeps Callus and many of his other forces away. Mm -hmm. What's left is what generally people of the Lowlands and the Skyset is called the Remnant which is like the leftover hobgoblins and demons and all these kind of monsters that were left behind, but are now still trying to like find ways to break the cradle or break the planar barriers and stuff and, and summon allies. Oh, I see. So break, the, yeah. so we know uh, break that. the cradle, bring Callus back. Yeah. That's generally what everyone is... is yeah. That's well, the legend sorry. that everybody knows. Um, Do we think of it like as a legend? This was about four or five hundred years ago. So 
for Sentry, it's very different because you were there and you would know some things a little bit differently, which we'll talk about um, just in private, just like ever so slight differences. Yeah. Um, Nova, you would have the same thing, but perhaps more in more detail. You would know some of the names of the battles. You would know how the other gods were involved. Um, you'd probably know that, yeah, things like the planar magic, like the Ganassi obviously arrived with Vortensar, the T Tieflings and ASMR arrived. Planar magic was something that Siaska banned. Um, like, she yeah. was just like, do not look into planar magic. This is, I forbid it. Um, but people still did it anyway because they're dumb. Um, <laughs> you would also probably know a little bit about the archways, which are ancient planar gates, but most people don't know about those. Um, so there, there you go. That's like the yeah. real quick for the three of you, the quick overview of, of that. Um, and the Court of Shadows is an old name. It's generally not used. Most people just call them the Remnant. The Court of Shadows was the name of Callus's army when he came down. Yeah. Like he called it the Court of Shadows. So it's which a really is how what you would army. Yeah, they are now called the Remnant. Okay. So we would think Remnant, and we wouldn't really know Court of Shadows. No. It's maybe like if you were yeah. like well-learned, but I'm, that's why Nova knows it and not the rest of you. Because, I don't know, you, do you have much history knowledge? I probably just was taught it, but, but it's it. like the boring lesson. Okay. So. <laughs> so yeah, so the rest of you would, yeah, as soon as she kind of says that they're known as the Remnant, it kind of twigs a bit right. more and you, you're that's aware of what they are. They are the remains of Callus' forces. Yes. Right. Well, that's not good. No, it's not good. So they're on the ship? They were the ones who attacked us on the ship, yes. Of all the oh, airships. No, they attacked us on the ship, but are they there now? If they were on a ship and they crashed... You're the one with the eagle eyes. Well, I can't see them from here. They're so far away. <laughs> also, <laughs> eagle perhaps. eyes, that's very racist. Are they about 60 <laughs> feet away? Who? The, uh, the airship. No, no, no. no this is like, far, far yeah, away. It's probably about a mile. Like You'll probably have to walk over there and stuff. Arvel will say, well, I mean, it's a, I don't want... If you don't want to risk yourselves, then by all means don't. But there could be supplies on that ship, food, water, healing supplies for myself. Packages. Could be the captain's still alive or someone as well. They might yes. need help. We need to help those poor But if there I ain't saying it's going to be there, a risk. Though. If That's they were there know. and the elves are there, maybe they've sort of killed a and few. Could be yeah. find each other. Yes. Maybe you could sneak in, not let anyone know you're there. Yes, good idea. I think at the very least, there's a lot of supplies scattered around just the valley in general. We could probably pick up what we need before we even get to the ship. We could try. We might even, if we're extremely lucky, find your colourful little I think big one. Siaska's on our side. And I look at the uh, Siaska's three. Siaska's dead. <laughs> Corin nods. He's like, hopefully Siaska is always on our side. But yes, I'm, we have no magical power to lend aid, but we can certainly say a prayer in your name. Absolutely. Oh, have you ever been to Gusthaven? I have actually, yes. Have uh, you seen the Grand Cathedral of the Star Mother? <laughs> that's where I learnt my that's where I learnt my lessons. What a divine place. Yes, I was quite fond of it and sky jousting as well. I was oh. quite fond of it. <gasps> oh right darn. You have sky jousting there? At Gusthaven, of course. We have one of the greatest sky jousting arenas in all Death of the rows. Or arena. What are the names of your current champions? I mean I've not been back in a long time. Would I, I know that? that. <laughs> I'd say that anybody who is familiar with it, again, not counting you two because you're a lowlander, you're a robot from the past. I think that it, mm, it, sky jousting is like a real kind of elven tradition. Oh, I it's, see. But it's definitely an enjoyable something people watch. Like it's what it sounds like: people on winged mounts jousting in the sky. Okay. Um, things like people and it. The different riders will find different types of beasts to ride on, and so you might have like the villainous kind of jouster who rides like a manticore, oh, or, wow. and then you have the heroic wow. one who rides a pegasus or a unicorn or whatever. And, oh, cool. Um, okay. Yeah. It's a, it's a beautiful sport. Do you know the name of your current champions? No. No. I okay. choose not to watch uh, the current champions. What? Why? Because some idiots are in it. What? Why? What? Yeah, it's just, it's just not. We've got to survive. Let's not Perhaps we this. should have this conversation when we can find ourselves at a nice inn with comfortable beds. Now, I like mm -hmm. the sound of that, Arvel. <clears throat> you always know what to say. How is Arvel we... looking? Pe peachy, like you can see he's kind of a bit pale. He's is he not... any worse than... He's not any worse, okay, but yeah. he doesn't look great. He's like, you can see that he's injured, uh, he's out of energy, he's just knackered. And listening to two sky people prattle on about sky jousting. <laughs> okay. I'm not a sky person. Uh, he basically thinks you are. <laughs> <laughs> We've got some I'm an air person. So, uh, just to, before we go on break. I would say we're going to go towards the ship. Yeah. You're going to yeah. investigate the crash. Yeah. Perfect. Well, I think that that is now time 
for a wee break. A wee break. A wee break. I'm sorry, Kate. So we're going to take a break. <laughs> uh, there's a fan art video. And when you come back, yes. I'm going to have a little puzzle from one of our sponsors, Brilliant.org, just for you. Yes. Don't go anywhere. Yay. Enjoy. Enjoy the fan art video. Thank you for your yeah. fan art. Thank you for fan art. Thank you. Bye. Go. Bye. Hello, and welcome back to High Rollers D&D. With me, your Dungeon Master, Mark short Humes. We'll do a quick recap of what's happened in the first half in just a second. But before then, thanks to our brilliant sponsor, Brilliant.org, I've brilliant. got a puzzle for you. Um, if you struggle with this one, go onto their website and learn all about the different ways that they can help you with problem solving and all that kind of stuff. Uh, this one I've called Liars in the Feywood. This is one of those classic, mm -hmm. like, I tell a truth, I tell a lie, which one is blah 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 kind of deal. And there's a whole section on brilliant.org which teaches you all about these kind of puzzles and how to work them out. So, wandering in the woods in search of a missing caravan, you find yourself transported into the Feywild, where you stumble upon a gathering of various Fey creatures who spot you and surround you, each grinning and smiling as though, as though, new ch as though children with a new toy. A powerful woman in a gown of flowers and deer antlers strides from the crowd and the other Fey bow and whisper her name. 
Greetings, mortal, she says. Her fingers dance, and you find your feet as heavy as lead and unable to move. You've stumbled into my party, which is rather rude, but I like your kind. You amuse me. I'll give you a chance to avoid my wrath and perhaps even earn a little boon for your trouble. She gestures, and three tall elves, each with different skin colors and clothes made of leaves in a different season, step forth. This is Valis, Syndra, and Roth. Some of them are Seely Fae, who always tell the truth. Some of them are unseely fae who always lie. Valis says, at least one of Syndra or Roth are unseely. Syndra says, at least one of Valis or myself are seely. Roth says, at least one of Valis or myself are seely. The queen turns back to you. My question, little mortal, is how many of them are seely fae? Answer right and I'll send you back with a prize. Answer wrong and you'll join our party forever. Uh, Whoa, I'll read uh, out those little uh, sentences uh. again. Valis says, at least one of Syndra or Roth are unseely. Syndra says, at least one of Valis or myself are seely. Roth says, at least one of Valis or myself are seely. And the question is, how many of them are seely, Fay? And you can find the solution to this on brilliant.org. Nice. Hey. There you go. Little Eight puzzle hands. from our so, My brain hurts. Can we just roll for combat? Uh, <laughs> you could do, yes. In a real D&D game, you could do that, and you'd probably die. Someone uh, in chat just said, burn the forest. <laughs> <laughs> that is also an option. Uh, except you're magically frozen in place. DM nonsense. Nice. Uh, so, a quick recap. So, you guys had crashed um, down in this valley, uh, which you've now learned is on the continent of Suvona, and it's called the Bitterwood. Mm -hmm. uh, you rescued your friend Arvel, who had suffered a kind of desperate injury and was bleeding um, uh, from an arrow wound. You managed to convince a group of wild elves to lead you alone with uh, Lucius, paying them 50 gold, which I uh, hope he's marked off deep and beyond. Um, you can check, sir. Uh, which he's marked off. Uh, and he paid them off and they've gone off, uh, but they did warn you that um, if you wish to continue traipsing around in their woods, you may have to uh, deal with their leader or them again in the future. Mm. Uh, you have had a discussion. You've learned quite a lot about some of your companions and the, tr and the world you are in. And you had made the decision to check out the airship crash site of the Sparrow Blade, the airship that you had flown in on. Um, the crash site itself, so I'm guessing that you leave the NPCs behind and it's just the five of you that go towards the crash site. If yes. they're looking after Arbol, then yeah, we'll put them somewhere safe. Okay. Yes, behind a big rock where they can't be seen. You can find like, yeah, some clumps of trees and rocks and things like that. But I mean, it's fairly, they can stay as, as hidden as they can. But yeah, it's, uh, it's not like you can so tuck can them into like else. a little cave. If, if <laughs> you come into trouble, make some sort of bird noise that Quill can pick up on. That he so knows is not nice. another bird of the local land, but it's a bird noise that's so distinct that we know it's you in trouble. Uh, or you could just shout. Or just shout. I was like, quite well. honestly, by the time you hear us shouting and you come back, either it's going to be going really bad or we'll be fine. Okay. And he's just like, you can see he's kind of like propped up, like he's sitting on the ground with his little broken leg stuck out and he's just got Evangeline and he's loading it with two crossbow bolts into like this double chamber that he has. Um, and yeah, he's just loading that up and you can see the others are kind of like, you know, getting themselves ready and preparing themselves. Yeah, it's kind of got like two sets of arms and it looks like it rotates around and then he can fire the other one. Nice. Yeah, it's like a double barreled. Better than Reynards. Yeah. Uh. Well, no, Reynards had like a clip of five. Better than Reynards. Anyway, enough of campaign one. Uh, <laughs> Dead. So, are you uh, trying to approach the crash site stealthily, or are you just going to so try think, and investigate it? I think we'd leave them behind, but still sort of coast the uh, trees mm -hmm. until we get to a point where it's so close that the only way we can get any closer to is, it is by everybody agree with that. Is that what you're all doing? Yeah. yeah. Um, sneak, sneak. That sounds like stealth checks from everybody. Then, please. And tell me the lowest one. Can I take my coat off and turn it inside out so it's slightly less garish, but it's still satin yeah, purple? It's not going to make much of a difference. It still <laughs> still stands out as much as normal. Uh, I got 14. 14. Uh, Sentry, you do make this with disadvantage. So this is a stealth check, and because okay. of your armor, you roll, roll two again. d20s, and you take the lowest. Like the lowest number. 10. <laughs> okay, so 10. I got 14, so that's higher. Right. Right. No. 22. <laughs> 18. Seven. <laughs> <laughs> so this time, like, Sentry, you're not moving quietly, but you'll manage to kind of follow the others and you're kind of stepping where they do, kind of meticulously following them. You've turned your coat inside out, but as you're moving along, you you didn't quite anticipate, like, 
it keeps getting caught on things because all you're the like, gems are on the inside. On the yeah. inside, so they're like catching on things and like they're irritating you, and you're like, oh, and you're like keeps like <laughs> snipping at your skin and things like that. The little metal oh, clasp, pinching, yeah. And you keep just Awful. making like little noises and things. This is um, exciting, though, isn't it? Sh Tracking. Sh so you guys make your way to the edge and you look out onto, yeah, what you can see is uh, heavy upturned earth and just the, uh, the, the prow of the ship kind of stuck out and you can see that most of it's broken off and then the rest of the, the ship kind of um, is broken up into sections behind it, right? And you can see different, like the three different tiers, the three different decks of the ship is all inside, but it's all been thrown about chaotically. There's huge holes in parts of it. There's debris scattered everywhere. Um, as you get closer, uh, most of you don't notice. You're kind of like looking around. You can see that there's like boxes and there's barrels kind of scattered around. Quill, it's two things you notice. Okay. The first one is you do see what appears to be a body of, um, you can see like an arm in a long coat, just kind of draped over uh, the top section of the prow. Um, looks oh. like it's like, you can't, you can just see this arm dangling over the side of it, basically. Yeah. Um, that's all you can see. The other thing is you can hear, probably padding around, not very far from you at all, um, you can hear animals kind of like padding and scratching. You know, like stalker-sized animals or just animals? hard to tell. This is literally you're just with your observant. You hear what sounds like maybe four creatures just kind of like padding and scratching, scrabbling, maybe snarling, snapping at each other. Hmm. Uh, there's <sighs> yep, definitely heard that one. There's uh, <laughs> there's definitely some animals in there, by the way, uh, scavenging. Um, but if there's animals in there, do, do wild owls? Uh, no offense. Do they use animals to, 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 to look for things? Would they use animals to look for things in other clans, maybe? Maybe. Maybe. It's possible. Can I listen and hear what kind of, like, sure, if I recognize? Check. Yeah, you're just listening. You're at the edge, unless you guys want to step in. Natural one. You're, just, <laughs> you're, like, trying to listen, but all you can hear is, like, ah. Ooh. <laughs> and then maybe, like, scribbling of Nova as she's sketching or writing things. Like, you can just hear, like, writing sound. I don't, I don't know about this clan, you might, but Rattles. there's also a lot of animals. Everywhere. Shut up. <laughs> Look at the Shut size up. of that tweet. Immediately. Sorry. We die because of you and your stupid little gems. Well, some of them are quite big, but yes. They Do you think, think these trees them? are evergreen or deciduous? Oh, right. <laughs> Either way, there's... They're, they're, what they're, are you writing, Nova? <laughs> I'm just trying to decide, are they evergreen or deciduous? I'm gonna snatch the quill out of her hand. Shh, just get another one out. <laughs> oh, How many do you have? Well, you never know when you're gonna need one. She's quite Stay right. Stay away from no. my wing. <laughs> um, okay. A lot of rolls. It is um, a lot of rolls. There's definitely a lot of animals in there anyway, uh, okay. scavenging away. Is this what part? So you guys are on the very edge, you're like on a tree line yeah. surrounding like this upturned because there's three earth. Parts, you said. You'd have to climb up onto the upturned earth and then like it would slope down. Oh, right, this okay. is the very front, okay. this is the, the prow, I think. Uh, it's the very front of the ship. Um, you can see that it has like a, a long sort of like blade-like front. Um, it's quite tall because it's three of these decks. Yep. Um, and you quill just spotted this arm flopped over the side, but it looks like whoever that, that body belongs to is up on the very top deck. Um, there was probably a front mast. It's been broken off, and you can probably see a huge chunk of it in the woods on the other side of this kind of like um, crash site. Mm. Um, but you'll, you'll have to climb up onto this kind of like upturned earth and then go down to get into the actual like wreckage. I imagine that's quite big. It's quite big, yeah. The Sparrow Blade was a large... It's not the largest. It's not like a galleon like ship. This so. uh, That's very useful for podcast listeners. Chris. No, no, I'm just... Uh, is it three times the height of a person? Uh, yeah, I mean, imagine like in when you were in the decks, like you had... It was probably like seven... Let's say ten feet just for the sake of it. And right. there's three decks plus the top decks. So it's like 30 feet and then plus a little bit extra for like the, the edges and stuff like that. Okay. Probably about 30 feet, 35 feet high. 35 okay. feet tall. Hmm. And the earth is that tall as well. Uh, the earth isn't that high, no. The earth is kind of turned up. It's probably about like 10, 10 feet, but you could Taller you could us. just scrabble up it, right? Like, okay. yeah. You'll have to like literally climb up it and like peer okay. over. Right. Mm. Um. Uh, Quill, you begin to hear what sounds like animals fighting, like like shaking something heavy around and like... <laughs> okay, well, if they're trained animals, uh, I don't believe they would be fighting like this. I'm sure you can all hear that. 
Can we hear that? It was. Or is it just him? Uh, uh, right. Uh, okay, I have an idea. Ayla, mm -hmm. if we go up there, we might be able to just peek over the the uh, the bit of earth up there. Mm -hmm. Just us two, you three, you can keep riding around evergreens, you can keep getting pinched by gems, and Actually, you're I think just far too loud, Sentry. I am sorry, I am heavy. It's not ideal. <laughs> not ideal. Not ideal. Um, we could just sneak up there. It's not ideal in this situation. No, ideal no. when being hit by stuff. Yes. 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 Yeah. Um, can I have a quick look around and see if I see any humanoids, any elves in the surrounding area? So you're just trying to look and see if you see them or are you looking for tracks? Hmm. Interesting. So I guess to our left I, and right I guess is just the, the edge I, of the forest. It's just like uh, just the edge of this crash, like this drag, this kind of like carved earth yeah. kind of stretches out. Scorched earth. I'll look for tracks and see if I can see how fresh... That's a survival check. It's trash. Um, ten. Ten. You try and look around. The earth here is... Um, it hasn't rained, but you think that just before the crash maybe it rained quite heavily, but you don't see anything really. You don't see any signs that it's been disturbed by kind of booted humanoids. It's been more disturbed by a big... A big old airship. 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 <laughs> right. yeah. Um, okay. And how far out of the tree line do, is until the earth? It's like so it's five, just, ten feet, yeah. it's not much. Oh, okay. Okay, well, I can uh, have a look. The, the trees are so densely packed here that, you know, it's carved its way through and thrown any trees aside. You can see that there are yeah, huge, yeah. like, fallen logs and stuff like that, but generally the tree line goes all the way up until the earth and embankment. Yeah. So you're going to sneak up, I think. And look and... Okay, yeah. give me another stealth check. Uh, I was also going... Yep, the, uh, stealth check. Can I use um, Divine Sense? Natural 20! Okay, Yay! nice. So natural 20 for you. Nice, I got 13. 13, and then you'd like to use Divine, divine Sense. Sense. Okay, yes. um, and that's 60 feet. Yeah. And it's Fiend's Fey or Undead. Yes. Okay, so you stretch your mind out um, and you focus the energy of the Matrix of Will and a faint kind of boom <clears throat> pulse echoes out and you don't get the sense that there's any of those creatures nearby. Cool. You don't get the sense of that. Um, Sentry, you just did a weird thing. Two of you kind of crawl your way up, crawl your kind of like one arm sort of like pulling yourself up onto this embankment. It's not high, but you kind of, you're keeping yourselves low and things like that. And looking out, you can now see, yeah, the, the, the wreckage of the ship spreads out. You can see that there are, quite a lot of the boxes are intact. Either they were secured and when it fell, they just, you know, got thrown around. The contents of them might be broken, mm -hmm. but a lot of the barrels and boxes actually seem to have survived. Um, you can see that the mast itself is broken off into several segments. Um, you see there are no signs of any elves um, that you can see. Mm -hmm. You can see a pack of four wolves are on the far edge of the front of the prow, and they have what appears to be a large tattooed arm that they're, yeah. they're right, uh, fighting over and they're kind of um, fighting over between each other. Oh dear. And uh, they're kind of like, this larger looking wolf is kind of keeping the others backed off, but they're kind of chomping on it, whatever. And that's what you can see from there. Um, you do notice that uh, the ship itself um, is in fairly like, it's broken into these three parts, but the, the decks are still, you can probably walk between them and stuff like that. Um, with the natural 20, you would probably also spot this arm dangling off. And you can see from the edge of the cuff, it's probably the captain. She's up on the top. Um, it doesn't look like she's moving. Mm -hmm. It just looks like her body up there. Um, um, what deck are the wolves on? Are they on the ground? They're on the ground, yeah. Right. They're basically on the, in this kind of dip of the carved through mm -hmm. earth. They're on the ground and they've got this arm um, that they're fighting over. But they're just four wolves. They're like long, shaggy, grey furred wolves. Are we currently as high as the top deck of the ship? No. Just about, actually, because it's 10 foot of, of dirt embankment. The lowest deck is about 10 feet. And is the ship like right next to us now, or is it...? Uh, you have way? to slide down. Oh, I see. Okay. It's about 10 feet. Okay. Oh. Really? I didn't have Dwarven Ooh. Forge to make you a cool map of a crashed airship, I'm afraid. That's cool. <laughs> but Dwarven Forge, if you'd like to make some airship terrain... <laughs> Um, Are you guys coming back to like tell us this or? Just... Nah. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll... <laughs> I was just... Can anyone okay. make the sound of a bear? No. I, I don't think making sound is a great idea. No, but I can do this thing where I can make images. So if we want to scare the wolves off, I can make an image of a bear, but it doesn't have oh. sound. So I need someone to be like, Well, you could make an image 
I, they're tearing apart. They're tearing apart an arm at the moment. Oh, you could make an oh. image. Yeah, you could make an image of a person, and then lure them rather than chase them away. I'd still need to make sound to make it convincing. I don't know. Elves are pretty dumb. Elves. Wolves. Elves. Sorry. Thank Wolves. you. <laughs> yeah. Some of us are. <laughs> <laughs> some. Some are. <laughs> <laughs> Just uh, straight over. Yeah. <laughs> Whoosh! <laughs> um, Alternatively... We fight them. Wolves. I've never... Have you? Anyone? Yeah. Wolves? You have. Mm. On your own, against four? Just They're quite... In packs, they can be quite dangerous. There's four of them. But there's five of us. Mm, but you can they, give me a nature... And I'd say Ayla can give me a nature check. Um, Ideally, I'd like not to fight. Can I help? You can make an H check. We can scare. This would be more like book learning. Thirteen. Would I know what like wolves sure. are and stuff? Yeah, anybody can make an H check. Cool, cool. Thirteen. Sixteen. Uh. Three. <laughs> so with a thirteen, uh, no, no, no. you've already basically said what you would know with a thirteen. They're pretty dangerous in packs. Um, they're pretty cunning, uh, especially like, if they're being territorial. Oh, wolves in the real. World. With a sixteen. Nova, you probably would have read that they, they don't like oh. fire. Fire, you know, people like that live in the lowlands generally will like try and fend them off with like torches or uh, flames. Also, yeah, larger predators like bears will generally scare them off. Um, loud noises can sometimes make them scarper as well. It's generally if they, if it depends on if one of them is the alpha. If one of them's the alpha, then they'll probably be braver. If none of them are the alpha, then they'll probably be scared off pretty easy. I would lay that to the group. I'm, I'm reading it from another scroll. I mean, <laughs> it was a two. I oh. have a minus one. <laughs> <laughs> it's a two, so, so yeah, helpful. I think like you weren't wolves weren't a big problem in solving. <laughs> like you've heard of wolves? Yeah. I don't think you've even seen a wolf before. Like no. they just look like dogs. Like yeah, yeah, friendly dogs. dogs. Yeah, like, you, oh. like oh, yeah. hey. like, you yeah. know dogs. Look, yeah, same thing. Can we go see the dogs? Um, um I'd like to not. Did any of them look like the alpha? There was one that was big. That's probably the alpha. Did you say something about fire? Like one was more, well, more aggressive. Aggressive, yeah. yeah. They don't like fire or yeah, bears. I can make fire. Mm. I don't like fire. You don't like can fire. Can we can we not do the fire? Oh, who would fire or did you I could, or, I could, or I could go away. Yes, you can hide. Hide. Can I do you that? Just cover your eyes like this. Okay, that's okay. And then. I won't point the fire at you. Well, how about you make fire and I make bear? Fire bear. Yes. No, that sounds like a great idea. Well, very there's, there are a lot of crates with stuff that we can yeah, get, the, so... Also, and fires at the wolves, not the airship. They're on the side, right? They're not... Yeah, but... They're, they're, they're I'm right a great I don't think that's true. We have not oh, yet seen you aim. aim well. I was in a corridor and I was attacked. But we have to jump. That was a small space and you saw Exactly. Like Fire in a small space is a terrible idea. Fire no, bear. not the but outside. Fire bear. Try it, sure. I mean, we can just hit him. We have the okay. Well, you hear the wolves stop their growling and fighting. Um, you've come back down, but you hear like, you just kind of faintly pick up like that noise is gone. Um, yeah, so we notice this. Um, I don't want to alarm you. I know I'm not very good at alarming quietly. Um, at the, the, the wolves, that, that's, that's, that's stop, that's stop, that's stop tearing the- Oh, they, the, they heard us. I think oh no. Get the fire bear out. Get the fire bear out now. Where you can it? you can just like put a hand up and say I'm whispering, <laughs> and then yeah, still okay. for our poor audience. I don't know what like this. <laughs> I'm talking very close to the microphone though. It's okay. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe now is a good point time to get the fire bear out. Okay. You Where? Ready? If this is definitely going to work. Wait, the direction. Yes. Over the hill, you'll see them. There's four. I thought them. arc if I work. Let's go up. Come on. Okay. So Nova and Lucius scramble up to the top. Here we go. This um, is exciting. The rest of you stay. But, all right. So Nova and uh, Lucius, you scramble up to the top of this earthen embankment, and you look down, and you see two wolves, um, and they're kind of like they're at the edge of the prow, like looking up, like. They said. And when they see fun. you, they howl. Uh, what are you doing? No. Firebolt. Bear. Okay. So. <laughs> What are you, you silent uh, image? It is 60 foot range, silent image. Yeah, okay. so it's an Eldritch invocation. Okay. I'll make an intelligence saving throw for the wolves, which they're pretty dumb at. Um, so, yeah, okay, and then you are firebolting one of them. Yes, that's a 19 plus a 5. That's a 24. 24. You hit that wolf, no problem. Uh, I wasn't aiming. 
I was just trying oh. to hit in front of them. Oh, you just hit in front so of like them? like firing Scare them okay. away. Uh, okay, so you, you launch up, the two of you kind of stand up and you, you hear them like, Hoo! and then you Hi, just, huh, you throw the, the fireball out and it hits the ground in front of them. It's mainly dirt and, and wood, but there are like scatterings of like wood splinters, little bits of like um, mast that have fallen off. You catch it and woof, woof, this kind of like large flame kind of erupts and you hear one of them like whimper desperately like as it like roars back. And then as the other one is kind of skirting to the side, this large silent bear kind of like looms up. <laughs> but it seems to be enough that the wolf backs up and is like scampering yeah. backwards. It just, worked. Just to myself, I'm going, rawr. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic job, Nova. That was brilliant. Um, just like a bear. 17? To AC? AC. Um, what's your AC? My, what's your AC, Lucius? My AC. Huh? 12. Yes. Or spell safety. My AC. Uh, your, what's your AC? It's on combat. 15, I 15. think. 15. So, as you're kind of like celebrating, you're like, oh, well done! And you're like looking <laughs> down from the sides, one on each side, one wolf lo launches itself as you, Lucius, but you manage to twist your body in time. <gasps> you manage to like just body block like its jaws with your hands um, and throw it to the side. However, Nova, one collides into you, slamming you um, like with its body, and then it chomps its jaws down. That's going to be. Can I? Well, I don't know how reaction works, but um, can I cast shield as a reaction? Shield is a reaction. So, so what that would that? Negate... So that adds fifty. That adds five, five. to your AC. Yeah. So that boosts it to twenty. So yes. So as the wolf launches at you, you see it's about to bite you, and you just close ah! your things. <laughs> You feel the pulse from Tiangong and this kind of invisible barrier just kind of boom around you. That lasts until the end of your next, My next turn. Go, yeah. um, so the jaws like of the wolf clamp around and it, it's trying to bite onto your wrist, but it doesn't quite get through. Um, and they it fails to actually do any damage to you. And that is gonna be initiative oh, no. friendos. Oh, no. Um silent image, that's a spell slot, right? No. No. If it's an so... invocation, it will say under warlock whether it is or not. I oh. don't believe it is, however. No. Uh, yeah. Okay, Ooh, so I've only spelled one on. Bears. Oh my. Fire! Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Ayla. Uh, 13. Quill. Natural 20, 22. Damn. Uh, Nova. Uh, 10. <laughs> oh, natural. Lucius. 16. And poor Sentry. One. One. Yeah. Almost, your beginner's your deck modifier is, is zero, <laughs> so it is a one. <laughs> Oh Your beginner's luck has already worn off. I know. Slow. <laughs> so slow. Um, so Quill, uh, you it's watch. So you see at the top of this yeah. ten-foot dirt <laughs> embankment, you watch as just silently keeping close. Like they almost appear out of nothing because they obviously kept close to the ground as they made their way up the dirt embankment. These two wolves launch out of like the sides, and one collides into Nova, almost chomping down on her, and the other one, Lucius, barely manages to throw to the side. So the, uh, the but two of them, you hear like the whimpering sound of two of them below, and the sound of like a fire. Yeah, but the the, the embankment in front of me—it's could I get to the very top of it in one? Yes, yeah, it's, it's ten feet. It's just it, oh, it, it, it's like ten feet, like because it's like difficult terrain, but you um, easily scamper up to the top. The one that it, I, how close? They're both, I guess, on the very very top of it, like they could mm -hmm. just tip right over. Yeah. Um, could I scramble up and use my claws mm -hmm. uh, to? In an attempt to basically just run up and then dig both claws into it and push it off into the... So you're trying to shove it more than trying to do damage yeah. to it. Yeah. Okay, so now it's going to be a strength check. I am going to give you disadvantage because obviously being one-handed, you can't quite put the same full amount of weight that somebody with, with both of their arms would be able to. Okay. What'd you get? Weight disadvantage. Yep. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> It was, it was not that to begin with, now it's just 10. Yes. Okay. Uh, so you rush up and you kind of bring your claws out and you go to almost like shoulder barge and throw your, your arm into it. But this wolf just kind of like lowers itself self down for the second. And as uh -oh. you go to shove, it like sh throws its shoulder and sends you off balance. Okay. Um, it doesn't like, it doesn't send you <laughs> flying back. go over it. <laughs> no. Uh, it just kind of like, <laughs> and it lowers down. But now its eyes kind of lock onto you. Oh. Oh, that's it bears its teeth. Uh, Lucius, what's your dexterity? Uh, plus two. Plus two, is it 14? Uh, yeah. Okay, uh, the wolves are actually going to go first, unfortunately. Okay. So one of them is going to turn onto, uh, uh, onto Quill. Um, oh, I'm so delicious looking. So, <laughs> yeah, you are. Uh, big <laughs> chicken. And in fact, actually, so the two that were down below, I'm just going to make a quick uh, 
wisdom saving throw for both of these. Um, quick question. Yes. Silent image is a concentration spell, so yes. should I have made a check? Uh, if you, take, if you take damage, but can you but check if shield is concentration? I don't believe it is. I don't think it is. It's not. No, yeah, it's that, not. That it doesn't have the scene, then no. you're fine. So no, so it's if you take damage, you have to check and see if it goes. However, it does see that now that the other two have engaged, whatever fear the other two wolves had, they kind of managed to overcome a little bit. And one of them on each side rushes up. One rushes next to um, Quill. It does take their full turn to kind of like rush up though. Um, okay. And then the other one comes on the other side of Lucius. However, emboldened by its ally, it's gonna, the one that was snarling up at you is gonna attack. Oh. Uh, 16 to hit you. Uh, I believe that does, yes. It does. So that is gonna be six, eight points of piercing damage. Eight? Can you make a strength saving throw, please? Oh, that's a lot of damage and a strength save. That'll drop that dice. <laughs> you have two arms. I know Quill, like. No, oh, it's, it's RP. It's, um, it's bad. It's very bad. Well, re roll, because it went off the table. Okay. That's just better, uh, but still not great. 12. 12? It's enough. Okay. Um, you feel it grabs onto your one remaining arm, bites its, cha its jaws down, and it's pulling you. It's trying to pull you down to the ground, mm. but you're managing to like tug your arm back and kind of keep Ow. it. But you feel like t uh, flesh begin to tear, and like you know, it, it rips at your arms, um, causing various bleeding. Uh, the other side, Lucius, now the other one's going to try and attack you. Uh, that's going to be 20 to hit, unfortunately. Uh, yes. <laughs> Strength saving throw, please, and you also will take six points of piercing damage. I rolled a four. Uh, so you are pulled to the ground. Six. You are, yeah, six points of piercing damage. Just this thing, and pulls you down onto the ground, into the dirt. You feel yourself kind of like, your face is smushed up against the wet, um, damp leaves and mud and sticks um, as it covers over you. Oh, shit. And then it's your turn. Oh, Christ. So you're currently <laughs> prone. This is pretty bad. Roll Lucius. You're fine. Two oh, HP. You're fine. Mm. Oh, none of us have that much. I'm fine. I want 20. We have no spells. You're a barbarian. <laughs> you have no spells. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody has yeah. healing. I'm going to. <laughs> yeah, you clerics out of spell slots. Mm -hmm. Whoops. I'm just going to reactionary chromatic orb, the closest well, yeah. the one that's at this <gasps> distance. So. Um, cool. Yeah, you do that. Let me four just... inch spell attack. It's a four inch little dot of. Cold. Let me just check. Uh, fire, one, sorry. Let me just check one thing. You, know, you sure you want to do cold? Okay. Let me just check one thing. Um, I know that it attacks against you if you're prone. I'm trying to check. Do, 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 do. Prone, 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 prone. Yeah, it does. Um, it has disadvantage in attack rolls, so you have disadvantage. Can it's I get a spell up? attack. Uh, yes, that would be half your movement. I'm gonna um, get up. You say you stand up and then you whoosh, summon the energy. Chromatic orb, cold. At yep. One of them. That's a nine. <laughs> nine is a miss. Uh, it leaps to the side as you kind of whoosh, this icy blast uh, erupts, coating the, the ground into a patch of frost. But you watch as this wolf just throws itself backwards, skids a little bit. I assume Dichromancy has to hit for it to function. Uh, no, no, it doesn't actually. It just, if you cast a spell level or first level or higher of a damage type that matches one of your Dichromancy options. Cold. So you can, yep, it does. So you can do. Uh, it's, what is it, your Charisma mod plus your Sorcerer level, I think. Okay, so that is two Check. plus uh, three. So that's five. Three points. Five points. Five points of cold, at least. Uh, okay. Even if you didn't hit it. So you launch that to the second one. Yes, I this is right. a class. Blue eye rather than a spell. flashes. And then you watch as like, you watch as like, he looks at like a blue part of his costume or like a gemstone. And with his other hand, whilst the cold misses and scorches the, the kind of like covers the, the dirt, he pulls off like almost like a, a trail of blue frost from the blue gemstone, whips it around and it just it clashes into one of the wolves necks. Oh, 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 as it like spreads over its body. Um, um, coats I've over. got 15 feet of movement, right? Yes, you do. I'm going to scramble away. I know there's opportunity. And it has advantage because it has oh. an ally there. Yep, that's a 23. Oh, no. That's, yeah. that's five, seven points, I'm afraid. Yeah, I'm down. He got knocked yeah. down. Oh, that's so you watch as like, Lucius table. like launches his spell and then desperately tries to, oh, he desperately tries to run away. And then the other wolf, the one that he's just kind of um, latched with the ice, leaps forward and just grabs him by the ankle. And you can see like as he uh, pierces <laughs> through, <laughs> you just hear like blood kind of like erupt. Can you make a constitution saving throw for me, please? Uh -oh. DC 10. Yes, pass. Okay, so you just you were down, but you don't take an injury. Um, as Lucius face palms into the earth, face palms, face palms, <laughs> <laughs> face palms. 
face plants. <laughs> Ayla. Um, I am going to rage. Just yeah, 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 yeah. You see these wolves kind of surrounding, Jeez. and you just like, and you feel this crackle of lightning begin to course down through your veins. Uh, and then, yep, yeah, I'm gonna hit one, and okay. I'm also going to use one of the charges on my hammer. Okay, that I'm is having... an action to do. Oh, it... so yeah. Is it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Why well, so would do that? The spell gust, then. which is an action. I'll just hit. Yeah, then. I figured you would. Cool. Um, and you're attacking normally, oh, not recklessly. No. Not recklessly, but. 13? 13 is enough. Uh, which side are you going for? The ones attacking Quill or the ones attacking Lucius? Lucius. Okay, so you rush up, you see him go down, and the one that grabbed his foot, the one that he'd injured with this cold, you just bring the hammer slamming down. Uh, 14 damage. <laughs> you catch this thing's head. Um, you kind of bring it up, you see that it's about to leap to the side, so you kind of, with great strength, as it's coming down, you actually pull the hammer back round and catch it on the side. You actually tear its neck partially off, you oh, hear the oh. spine snap oh. as its head is nearly ripped from its body by the force of this hammer blow. The body hits the, the embankment, skids and rolls down. Um, damn. Nice. You see the other one back off, like you see this other wolf beginning to back off. The two like fighting the quill. Crack, crackling lightning like, and my eyes are really um, And it yeah. just sees you as this predator and it's backing away from you immediately. The ones fighting quill, however, are still fighting strong. Um, and that's pretty much with movement and action. Yep, yep. Nova. Um, so Lucius is born. You watch him like literally. So, <gasps> is it like a medicine check if you've got no potions or mm -hmm. anything yeah, like that? Yeah, it's medicine that. check to try and stabilize him. Hmm. What happens if you have, like, you roll low? Does it make it worse, or...? You don't know. Okay. Could do. Mm -mm -mm. Might not. Fingers and there's... infected wound. <laughs> 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 just get dirt, and you just shove right it in there. there. Yeah. Gangrene It looks up. like his body's, like, with the, the way hit points work is, like, hit points all don't always represent, like, injury. This is almost like his system's gone into shock, and he's, like, you know, yeah. yeah. So you just need to bring him round, essentially. Yeah, slap him a bit. Um, so there's one wolf next to us. Uh, there's one wolf next to Lucius that is now backing off because Ayla's stood over him basically with his hammer. Uh, and then there's two next to Quill, which are like one's got his arm and is like trying to drag him to the ground, and the other one looks like it's ready to pounce on him again. Okay. Can I place a. It, where's the alpha? Like, it, well, I guess that's probably. You look at them and it's like the four of them, none of them look bigger than the rest of them. Yeah. Um, whatever Quill and Ayla saw, it just looked like one was being more aggressive. Hmm. Not sure if any of these are actually an alpha. Okay, um, can I make a medicine check? On, sure. Um, Punch one in the snout. So you lean up and taking this moment Use where this other scroll. wolf <laughs> is, uh, where this other wolf is backing away from Ayla, you kind of rush up, kind of tuck behind Ayla, and then you like start like looking at um, Lucius and his injuries. You maybe wrap like a bandage around the bleeding. Nine. Nine. You're like, ah, you're not quite sure what you're doing. Like, I you, didn't you, take that course! You're like, you're trying to tie it off, but you don't quite tie it tight enough. You're slapping around the face, but nothing seems to be working. I'm slapping him a lot. Uh, <laughs> sentry. That's two uh, cool. Can I go to Quill and try and give him a hand? Yeah, sure. So you can, cool. you, you can you stomp your way up this dirt embankment. Yeah. You stand next to Quill and he's got one wolf kind of tugging on his arm and the other one looks like it's ready to pounce. Hey, can I Can I get the... Can I get the wolf that's tugging on his arm try and get that wolf to stop? <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah if you just want to make, attack with a battle axe. Uh, attack with the battle axe. So on your combat tab, you roll a d20. And then back. plus your attack bonus for the battle axe. Nice. He's standing back to give you a clear shot, like... Don't take the other arm! <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I'm like an old person. <laughs> oh my god, I've got so many tabs open. Please stop, thank you. Okay, so it's a 14. And then what's your attack bonus for your battle axe? And then it's 1d8 plus 3. Well, that's the damage, what's the attack oh, bonus first? Attack bonus. Just because I want to make sure uh, that anybody... Plus 5. Okay, so plus 19. the 14, 19, that's easily a hit. The battle axe comes down. Now you roll the damage dice, which is the D8 plus okay, three. Which is this one? The yeah. Is it? Yep. That's yeah. it. That's one. Eight. So that's eleven. So with this, you oh, watch. You you wait, oh, and yeah. Quill kind of like he looks at you. There's a shared nod. He yanks his arm back, which kind of throws the wolf off its feet. You bring the axe down. It just slices through its neck and yeah. just decapitates the creature in time. Wow. Yes. Um, it's decapitation. Well. <laughs> <laughs> it is for a second, but then it seems to think. You watch as now the other wolf now begins backing off. Um, and at this point, uh, it is actually Quill's go first. Um, to retreat. 
So they're backing away, but I guess I won't. It does look like this one is, yeah, like it's looking at Sentry and it's like, like backing away. Um, <laughs> is there any way I could be within five feet of both of them? Yes. Uh, I would like to move to that position. You will, however, Ayla and Lucius's body would still be in there as well, because it's kind of like clumped in the middle. You're at the top of this like dirt mound, basically. Oh, uh, okay. So to catch both of them within five feet of you would also. Pass. Oh no! Wait, I can. I have by choice. Okay. Great. Um, so I'd like to move into there. Yep. Uh, do the wing swoosh again. <laughs> Feathers spin around me this time, and like super, super quickly. And this is word of radiance. Um, so they make a con thirteen save. Each of them makes a con plus uh, DC thirteen. One makes it, one fails. Ah. Well, that one that failed takes a d6 of radiant damage. Nice. Four. <coughs> so what's this like? The quills kind of like the feathers fly out and like... S- just a few feathers that like, spin around me super quickly and just catch anything within the okay. five foot radius. So you watch as like these radiant boss like start burning and, and burning away at some of the fur and one of them seems to be caught and it's like... Rrr, 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 the one that was like backing away from you. But the other one like manages to kind of dodge and leap out of the way. Um, just keeping nimbly on its feet, but it is also clearly backing off as well. And that's all I got. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, the wolves at this point, um, they will disengage. So they spend their full action to just basically move 40 feet away. Um, and they basically dart off into the forest unless you want to try and stop them. They, they watch them running off into the woods. Um, but they move 40 feet away. Lucius, death saving throw, please. That's, that's cocked. cocked. Yeah. Yeah. cocked. Two, that. fail. It's not a one, so it's only one death fail, death yeah, saving throw. That was very mm-hmm. close. Um, after that, it is Ayla's go. So you see them, like, you're raging. They've just moved 40 feet away, but you can see them, like, scampering off can down the thing. reach them and I'm mad about it. <laughs> well, how far can you move? 35. <laughs> yeah, you could throw a hammer. Nah, not worth it. <laughs> uh, I'll. You could, probably, like... you could, if you move 30 feet, they'll be in the range of gust. But that just blows them yeah. away. <laughs> Push people um, further away. Yeah. <laughs> now I'll try and prod okay. Lucius. Okay. Is he okay? Is he? Is yeah. He gonna... I think you're raging with lightning crackling up and down your arms. It might be with disadvantage if you do a medicine check, because like you're like, <laughs> you're pumped up on adrenaline. You're like, your arms are shaking. I'm gonna do that. Okay. I'm just gonna, like, yeah, I'm just you're not gonna... in, you're not the right person to I'm be healing. I'm just gonna right stride now. in the general direction of the wolves. You can chase after just them. Being like, yeah, yeah. Because you get the sense that they, they, I mean, knowing wolves, like they might circle around and try and come at you again, but like you can just chase after them and be like, go on, get out of here, kind of thing. Yeah, I'll chase. Okay, yeah, sure. Just give me a quick intimidate check, actually, with advantage. Intimidate. 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 Oh, that was rubbish. Uh, like eight, nine, nine. Okay. Yeah, you kind of like, you like chase down there and you're like, Psh, you can see the crackling energy and you're just like, ah, and you're screaming at them, trying to get them to back off. Um, not intimidating enough. Not intimidating enough. Nova. Are they within 120 feet? The wolves? Yeah. They're only 40 feet away. I can't decide whether to blast or try and poke this one again. Uh, I'll poke him again. He's, he's writing his will, so... He, um... <laughs> yeah, okay. I'll, okay, um, so you're going to medicine? Yeah, I'll medicine okay. check again. Eight. You're like, okay, remember, what did they teach you about this? And then you like go to do CPR and you're like, no, 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 that's not right. Yeah. You think about mouth to mouth, no, 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 that's yeah. not right. Like him. And icky. Yeah. Ow. <laughs> yeah. Just takes you a moment. Uh, sentry. Um, can I um, can I also do a medicine check on mm-hmm. Lucius? Yeah, yeah. You can yeah. stride on over, kind of Nova like is in the way, but you kind of step to the side of her and yeah, medicine check. Yeah. Uh, nineteen. Nineteen. That's a lot so sentry. <laughs> You were pro- like when you were built, they taught you how to tend to wounds and things like that. Not for battlefield purposes, but also for like your your protection, uh, for people in your in your protection, like making sure that they're okay. You sit down, you take the bandages off Nova, and you like look at the injury. The injuries are minor. It's probably more that he's in risk of shock. Elevate his head. You begin like you know feeding some water, like just basically making sure he's all right. You bandage up the leg where it is bleeding quite profusely, and you stabilize Lucius. Can I like show Nova like as if I'm teaching like. Is that how you do yeah, it? Like, you probably think that you'll need to do it. You could probably, if you spend enough time and you like do some practice, you can probably teach her enough to give her some benefits. You are, are you proficient, proficient in medicine. 
Uh, hell no. No. She's like, I'm like I mean, minus one. It would one. take time. It would take yeah. weeks of practice to do that. But you can you uh, can slowly over time. If you're proficient in medicine, you can teach yeah. somebody. I am minus one in medicine. Yeah. yeah. Well, over time, you could definitely do that. If you want to do that in between like long rests and stuff, you can teach Nova how to do that. I like medicine. to think that you're just like taking things out of my hand, turning them the right way around. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and you can see that Nova's like clearly trying to do way more advanced stuff than she yeah. needs to. Uh, I was a bit keen. But yeah, at this point, the wolves just back off. No more combat. Um, and Lucius is unconscious. Um, mm. It will take you an hour because you're technically short rest. Uh -huh. When he yeah. wakes up, I'll just be like, Fire Bear! <laughs> well, you guys are going to take a short rest or are you going to do stuff while Lucius is recovering? Uh, I mean, I guess. I mean, I, yeah, do stuff. <laughs> can, can I just yeah. leave him? No, like, I was like, just going to. Can, can, can I, well, can I carry him, him into, in the the, ship? Yeah. into the yeah, ship? Yeah, you can find like a, a drier place in the ship. You just kind of pick him up. Yeah. He weighs nothing. He's just like. Poof, poof. <laughs> the weight's just, all in the robe. Yeah, <laughs> it's all the gemstones. Yeah. That's what the way it is. Yeah. And I suppose it's um, his coin pouch the... is the heaviest part. <laughs> yeah. I might take a couple of those. Sure. How many do you want to take? No, I won't. I know. Take five coins. He's, he's, you know, he's, got, he's got multiple different pouches on him. I might take. Do I see this? <laughs> I don't know. You might make a sleight of hand check if you're going to do it. What would mine be? Perception. Or <laughs> well, it'd be your passive. What's your passive perception, Nova? Passive is yeah. nine. Fourteen. Nine. You don't notice it. You do. What's your passive 13. perception? Thirteen. You notice as well. I'll How much? Two. 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 Gold. So you just like, mm -hmm. while you're like carrying him, like you hear like a jingle. You just kind of mm. pop the pop pouch, take two coins out, put them in. Does you know, you do it discreetly. For making him but, safe. Yeah. Like, uh, um, I'm unconscious. Yeah. If I was to say, Ayla, how would you look at me? You can't, no, don't, me, no, well, you no, either are, no, you either no, no. say it or you don't. No, no, because I would just say Ayla and then... Right, I'll then do what, no, you say Ayla. Act this out You first. look at Ayla and say, Ayla, yes? how do you respond? I literally, no, I don't even really say it in, like, in such a, like, a teaching sort of tone. It's okay. just like, Ayla, and how do you look at me? You literally just like, expectantly, I imagine, like, what? <laughs> Blank. Don't worry. It's okay. Cool. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna look and see if we can find some stuff. Yes, me too. Um, you might want to put him down somewhere. Um, he's fine. He's inside. You can find like um, some rigging that like you can kind of stretch out like a more like a hammock and throw him in there. Just throw him in there. Uh, it'll be fine. <laughs> he's just unconscious. He'll wake yes. up. Do we see his? Point. Do we see Lucius's chest? Okay. Well, anybody who's searching the wreckage uh, at this point, you're going to all make investigation checks for me. So I have a passive investigation of eight. <gasps> keep rolling. Yeah, seven. that would be so passive. Think of it as like if you were just walking around like down a corridor and there was a secret door. Mm. That's what passive so it, investigation. It, as I was walking from thing to, from the mound to the ship to go into the thing, would I have spotted anything just? Passively or? Yeah, okay, but let me hear what the others get. Okay. And then 22. we'll do yours. 22? Six. Six. Investigation for century. Nine. Nine. So, uh, what did you get, sorry, Kim? 20. 20. So, oh, 22. no, sorry, no, 22. 22. Wait, no, I've mathed that wrong. 19 plus two. Okay. 21. Um, so, Sentry and Ayla looking around, for, as far as your, it all just looks like broken wood, bits of rope that aren't even really usable. That's about it, really. Uh, you probably do find the remains of um, a half orc that looked like the navigator at Kamu. Um, he's been ripped, ripped apart. Is that by the arm symbols. that was yeah. flopping? One of his arms has come off. Um, you can see that he's been stabbed multiple times. His eyes have been completely burnt black. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, I didn't his need eyes that are detail. just completely black, and you can see like yeah, kind of traces of from the black. So he was probably killed by one of those guys before they hit the ground. Maybe. Uh, that's what you find. Um, Quill and Nova, between the two of you looking around, um, you do find quite a lot. Um, first things first is there is enough supplies where you can easily gather about six days worth of rations for a single person. So either like six days for one person or one day for six people. So like food, you can find like dry rations, um, water, like little water containers. Do, like, do we find that each or between us? Between you. This is all between you. Uh, you do find. You also find a backpack which has climbers' tools, a flint and steel, a lantern, and a flask of oil. Okay. The flask of right. Flint and steel and a light. Uh, a lantern and a flask of oil. 
Who will finish first? Finished. Wait, what was okay. the last one? No, wait. Uh, flask oh, yeah. <laughs> And then more, the, probably the most interesting thing you guys find is um, you actually find it uh, in the central mast, which most of which is broken off, but you can see that a chunk of it has been split open and this was inside the mast itself. Oh. It appears to be a hexagonal, hexagonal prism inlaid with a sapphire that when you touch it feels cold, almost like a breeze, like a wind breeze. Um, the sapphire itself it is cracked um, and the metal cage looks like it's bent in certain parts. Like it's almost like this kind of lattice prism. Um, but yeah, you Quill, and you can give me an arcana check on this Nova to see if you would know what this is, but Quill will because of his background. 18. 18, you both know what this is. Um, you recognize this is, this is an Ethereum infused command core. So this is one of the devices, not all, this isn't the only thing that makes a skyship fly, hmm. but what this does is it fills the sails with almost like perpetual wind, which allows them to travel around. If you could find the right buyer, this thing would be worth quite a lot of money. Because wow. mm -hmm. it could probably be repaired and it would be yeah. cheaper than building one from scratch. Alternatively, if you were ever to try and like build your own airship, you could use this as a replacement component. You could have this as a component to save yourself. I'm just going to excitedly babble and just be like, Quill, Quill, we're taking this, we're taking this, we're taking this. We can build our own airship. I want to go to sea. Sorry. Like I said, this is not the only part of an airship. You need multiple parts. This is the one of the main we're, components, however. I've been, I've been looking for one of these. Have you? I mean, we're not going to be able to build an airship in a, in a week. And Believe! Just fly to... But this is the start. Every journey starts with small steps, and this is a small step. I'm taking it. Bye. Okay, bye then. <laughs> um, the other thing is you do see the body of the captain, um, but you would have to climb up to get it. So you'll have to, if somebody wants to go up there, it's an athletics check to go up find it. Up. All four of you see that. Um, while they're doing this, Lucius, you wake up while they've been searching. Uh, you can spend a short rest, so if you have hit dice, you spend them. You have one hit point, and then you can spend short rest dice. 14. Okay. Athletics, 14. Did you want to do it as well? Oh, yes, go for it. Why not? Oh, it's an eight. <laughs> okay. Uh, I guess you don't want to climb up there. I'm not going to be able to go okay. up there, I don't think. Nova, are you climbing up to the top? Oh, I'm like trying to get the core out, so yeah, that's like, take... <laughs> like, you've got like, you're kind of, you find like a, 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 a lever, crowbar, of like yeah. a, not like a crowbar, but like a long piece of wood, and you kind of shove it in, and you're like wiggling it to try and like widen the gap, and then maybe like, you're like, Quill, you've got thinner arms than me, and he's got like his claw wing in, <laughs> and he's got it, and he's like, eh. And then the two of you like work together and you're like holding Quill and he's got his arm. He's like, right now, pull! <laughs> and it flies out, but you've got this. It's probably about like this big. Nice. Um, so it's probably for podcast listeners, it's like, what would you say that is? Like, foot and a bit. Foot and a bit. Foot and a half. Foot and a half uh, long. And then it's probably about half a foot, no, a foot, about three quarters of a foot tall. But it's like a big prism of like metal. It's, it's heavy as well. Like, it's 60 like, centimeters by 30 hmm. centimeters. Sure. Yeah. This um, is amazing. I mean, what are we While doing? you're carrying it though, like this is heavy. Like, you know, this will probably slow you down a little bit, like, if you want to carry it around with you. I'm already um, strapping it to my back. Oh. Did you spend any hit dice? <laughs> I've used them all already. You've used them all already, yeah. so you were on one hit. One hit point. Uh, Ayla, you climb up. And it's not hard because the wood's kind of like splintered in several sections. You kind of climb up the panel. You probably have to leave Howling Dale on the ground because it is a fucking heavy war hammer. Mm -hmm. Or you have to like climb it up with you and it's quite strenuous. But when you get up to the top, you can see the top deck of this. This is the front of the airship. Mm -hmm. um, and you can see that it is marked with heavy gashes, almost like energy or fire cut <coughs> through the wood, like these huge chunks which have been perfectly scorched, but the carve has been almost like it's been done without, uh, it's like something's cut through but left no jagged edges. It's just like <laughs> cut through it perfectly. Lightsaber. Kind of, but like <laughs> more fiery. Like, right, burning um, lasers. Yeah. Like what the half orc kind of Possibly. burning. Yeah, yeah, kind lasers. of looks like that. Yeah. Um, you notice that the, the there is a body of a high elven woman, the Captain Falthea. You've met her a few times. Um, she is unfortunately dead, but she is kind of lying there, her arms kind of uh, outstretched. Um, you can see that she's got this long overcoat with the image of a, of a sparrow holding a sword in its hand. It's kind of dripped over. It looks like a very well-made coat. It's probably quite valuable. Um, but she has, like, tucked in her hand, you can see a rapier, um, looks again very finely made, kind of scattered on the deck. But in her other hand, she has um, a wood handled with a long metal barrel uh, pistol. 
It looks like a little bit like a flintlock pistol, but yep. you can see that it's etched with symbols of lightning bolts and thunderclouds all over like the handle um and uh you can see that it has uh, on her person she's got like a small uh, pouch with um these kind of they look like bullets but instead of like being made from like a, a metal jacket they've almost got like a stone base and then sort of like a metal bullet tip at the front of them um and you'd probably recognize this is this is a new technology called a thunder a thunder uh pistol Thunder pistol. A thunder, a thunderstone pistol. Hot boogity. Um. These are pretty unstable, but they are kind of like a new firearm. Unstable how? Uh, well, I would probably say that Ayla wouldn't know exactly how. You've just heard that these okay. things can be pretty dangerous. Um, um. And you don't have any training in how to use it. No. But you could probably over time learn. Mm. Um, I'll take the the pistol and the rapier. With mm -hmm. Intention to sell that or okay. if anyone can use it, and then uh, it's. I just like to sort of place her to rest in a mm -hmm. nicer way than draped over the side of the boat. Like I want to take her, and it, is the wheel at the front or the back? Of the back. Yeah. But you can make your way over there. Like if you're not under threat, then it it will just take time. Mm. Um. In which case, it's strong enough to carry her down, probably. Yeah, I'll carry her down. Mm -hmm. Um. Throw it over the edge. <laughs> no. <laughs> Jeez. God damn it, Tom. Um, yeah, just being respectful. But uh, does she have anything else on her person, or is a small key, a small bronze key, probably to, mm. to like her around office. her neck on like a long, long leather thong around her neck as a small key. We knew where her show. her office was. Yeah, we passed yeah. it on the way out. Yeah, it's on the bottom deck. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's in the central area, so you'd have to make right. your way into the wreckage to do that. But you could do that if you want. <laughs> okay. So Sorry. pleased with yourself, aren't you? <laughs> I, yeah. I didn't even hear what you said. Does it? Does <laughs> you start the edge? Oh. Boom. Boom. <laughs> so my immersion. Um, oh, so you make your way down. So you see Ayla returns down with a body. Um, you can see that she. I mean, guess that like, you tuck the pistol in like a belt or something like that. Same with yeah. the rapier. Like you can see she's like tucked like this rapier into like a belt and this pistol um, and then she's carrying the body of the captain down. Uh, you see these two come back with their ginormous core um, and probably like a backpack. It's a backpack full of the other supplies so it's like a leather backpack mm. um, and you guys meet back up. Is uh, you found nothing but wood and rope, I'm afraid, Sentry. Yeah. <laughs> okay. This whole time as you get closer back to me, you just hear sobbing. Just echoing throughout the, uh, the basement. <laughs> You're exhausted. Like it's like a physical tiredness as well. What a handkerchief. Are we all the uh, eyes. very exhausted as well? I mean, it's only. I mean, how? What are your hit points on? That's the main I'm thing. I'm seven. Like, right? so yeah. Twenty. It sounds like you. Most of you are probably pretty, pretty injured. Nova's all right. I'm Nine. excitedly babbling like. We could literally make this to power an airship. This is amazing. It's going to take a lot. We're going to have to fix it a little bit, and I'm going to need some other things as well. But this thing can fly an airship. Do you know how to fix it? I'm not getting on an airship again. Possibly. That's and fine. And then getting on a plane, fool. <laughs> Happy the fool. I got on one is, airship, and this happened. Is this not what uh, Lucius was saying was inside his trunk? I mean, not this one particularly. No. No, so we haven't found his stuff. No. Uh, yes, you, do, you, you would find the Ellen Ashton. Uh, we would find it. Well, yes. This is a okay. core. Those this is a did, those power core. Did. This is like a battery. Do you know what a battery is? You did find his case. You did find his case as well. I forgot to mention that as well. With the, oh. With the, yeah, with the 22, they find the case. Oh. So <laughs> we're, 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 Here I, it I, is. I imagine that we go up and I'm just like, look, Lucius, we yeah. found a power core. Not right now. Please. And then. Lucius. <laughs> we also found these. Oh, yeah, that. <laughs> There's your, <laughs> that is good. I'll, your I'll personal luggage isn't there, but your <laughs> the the prototype case is there. Oh, thank Siaska, thank you, Quill, Nova, thank you, so much. Daddy's gonna be so proud. I'm so <laughs> sorry, I'm so tired. This has been an awful day. Is it quite a heavy case for that, um, or is it a small? It's like a briefcase, so it's right, like a okay. briefcase. Oh. Um, okay. And it, but it's quite quite heavy and it's quite mm -hmm. large. But yeah, it's like it's slightly larger than a normal briefcase. Um, with like a little handle, little kind of like metal handles, and it's emblazoned Fire with his family bear. sigil. Mm -hmm. Fire bear. We do have a slight Fire problem bear. there. That was great. Um, well, for starters, we've got very few rations, about less than a day's worth for all of us combined, including uh, the people back there. Um, and we have a core, which is very heavy. Um, the briefcase, which is another thing to think about carrying down to 
however long it's going to take to find this village. We're doomed. <laughs> About 9 a.m. It's only the morning. <laughs> we've been here for a few I hours. Don't know, a few hours. And we've been attacked twice. And I've got a big cutty in my leg. <laughs> Man, that's really ripped your trousers as well. <laughs> I'm going to mend it. <laughs> what weak mending I've got left. It could be a, a whole lot trip. worse. Arvel broke his leg. You're right. We yes, you've got a also, we that. have to travel with them as well. And I like them, but he's got a broken leg. That's going to be difficult to do as well. But he, he knows he knows the area. He's useful. Well, no, not he's really. not ever he been here. He said he didn't. Oh. If anything, me with this map. We can't just abandon Arvo. No, I'm not saying abandon him. I'm just thinking about all of the things we have to do to travel that entire distance. Quill, as you're having this conversation, you pick up. Oh, no. You notice somebody watching you from the f f quite a, maybe about 20 feet, 20, 30 feet back, head, from the direction that you'd left Arvel and the others. You see a small figure kind of like tucked behind like the trees, just kind of watching. Uh, so can I see him? Like in the corner. You just see like a figure. You don't know if it's a man or a woman. You just see like this kind of like you see you basically hear like the rustling of a bush, and then you can see kind of like an outline of a dark clothed shape, just kind of like watching. Okay, I'm gonna sort of trail off for a little bit, and then like, uh, Lucius, uh, have a look in your briefcase, um, just to make sure everything's okay, and sort of sidle him around idea. so that I can then get into a position where I'm then looking almost directly at him while okay. looking at Lucius. Give me a direct perception check, just roll uh, perception. No, oh, that's off the table too. <laughs> oh oh my wait. god. And that's even worse. Um, <laughs> that is seven. You're like watching but they, as you kind of step around the side you lose track of where they are exactly and then as you're looking like you can't, where do they go? You're not quite sure. But you definitely saw somebody over there. I'm gonna put in the lock code. I assume it's got that. Sure. Well, it's got some it's your magical, case. Yeah. It's got touch protection. ID. It'd probably be more like um. It'd probably be like yeah, like voice touch activated. I'll trace like, uh, sigil. Thing. Yeah, sigil. Yeah, it'd be like, like a little arcane thing. Yeah. It kind of clicks open. Right. Seems to be okay. So you can see it's got like um a very heavy sort of like thick fabric kind of base that kind of helps yeah. protect it. Um, and then it has like a cloth over the front. You check under the cloth. The prototype's there. It's all there. Oh, good. Huh? Uh, Cedric, Cedric, Cedric. Any blueprints? Cedric, Cedric, Cedric. Oh. Are there what? blueprints in there? It's your case, man. Cedric! What, what, what's, what's wrong, Quill? There's someone whisper. over the hill. <laughs> I'm like whispering it like that. Oh, okay. Someone over the hill. Um, watching us, I think, but maybe, I don't know. Um, not again, not numbers. You can see them just at the top of that dirt, like, kind of like, peering over them. Act natural. Well, that's where you saw them anyway. Act natural, we didn't see him. Oh, uh, sentry, send, send your echo. Bleep, bleep. Oh yeah, I'll send echo to Okay, so you focus for a moment and then <laughs> phasing out of your matrix of will, this little ball of wood and metal, and this oh, purple light. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> it just like looks at you for a second and then it like <laughs> flies off upwards. Um, do you want to make a perception check for him? Yeah, this is plus three. 16. 16. Okay. Um, you focus for a moment and then looking through his eyes, you see Sentry uh, Echo, he's like, Woo, and he like floats up and he's scooting around the trees and then he goes up quite high and then he kind of like goes along like a, in the trees up above. And then you see him looking down on a young uh, woman with black hair and black clothing, just kind of watching from a distance. Like it looks like she's like watching you guys. And it looks like Valor, the girl from before, but it looks like she's probably snuck off and is, is watching you guys. Uh. Um, <laughs> and then, okay. And then, yeah. Fair enough. Watch your echo echo comes see. back and he's like, whoop, whoop, whoop. And then he just, <laughs> you know the information that he saw. Yeah. So we are being watched. Uh, oh, oh no, no, whoops. no, no. No, Barbarians. it's a young, young girl. Uh, she's just all in black. Just oh. You mean Valor? Yeah. Yes. Hmm. Why is she watching us? Why is she not with the others? It's dangerous. We should tell her to get back. We should probably go and find out if they're okay. Yeah. More than anything. Um, we should see. Yeah, if they're split up, this can't be good. Hmm. Maybe she just snuck off because she's a naughty child. So we could Based use this as a teaching moment. Yes. We could ground her. Uh, housebound. 
Mm, but we're not in a house. Oh. Grounded. We're already grounded. We're in the lowlands. Very good. Now, help me up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I put one hand out and help you out. dainty. <laughs> Very dainty. <laughs> Thank you, dear Quill. I still don't know. Let's go teach Fala a lesson. Um, how? Well, we talk at her. Talk at her? Yes. That's what you do when you teach someone a lesson. After you. Right. <laughs> okay. I adjust myself, inflate my chest, and storm out. You head up the embankment and you go to where Quill and, and Echo and Sentry stand. Now, Vala! Nothing, nobody's there. There's, I think your Echo is corrupted or something. There's no. nothing here. He was there, I saw her. 100%. Right. Mm. Well, it's been a long so time. Sentry goes up, you kind of go up to the top of the mound and you're looking around Do as I well. The rest of you are still down by the ship. Any uh, bushes or anything moving? Make a perception check. Boop. Uh, 20. Yeah. Ooh. You do. Oh, wait. You, it looks like she 17. snuck off to the side. Um, when she heard, saw or heard you guys coming up, she clearly snuck off and is slowly making her way back to wherever you, like, the, where you left Arvel and the others. But you can see her just ahead and she stopped and she's watching. Like, you can see her just kind of like... Now, Vala, I can see you. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be naughty, come out. She like, come on. Looks. And she goes quiet as if like, if I don't do anything, he went. See, I can <laughs> see you too. And then she kind of is like, and she kind of like, like kind of comes out of like these bushes and you, she starts pulling things out of her hair and she's just like, you guys didn't see me for a long time. I'm surprised you caught me now. Well, Birdie has got very good eyes. Mm -hmm. oh. And we were very distracted by wolves. Did I've you heard, see that? I didn't see the wolves, no, I, I didn't see that. I own. I just. I, I was getting bored, and I wanted to see what you were all doing. It sounded like you all had something much more interesting than just sitting around. We uh, made a fire bear. Oh, and she looks over. And she's like, "Wow, what's a fire bear?" It's a bear that's on fire. She created an illusion of a bear, and I threw a firebolt through. You shouldn't be learning these things. It's Why not? dreadfully dangerous for a child. He makes a good. Not point. a child. I'm. I'm fourteen. You're a That's teen. old enough to learn about stuff like that. Well, she should know how to defend herself, to be fair. She's stuck out here just like the rest of us. Right, thank you. Uh, exactly, that's what I've been trying to tell exactly. Yusuf in that. You're a human. Other, the other people at the church get to learn how to use weapons. I want to learn. You want to use weapons? No, oh, yes. I can't help you there. I, I advise against this greatly. <laughs> You're far <laughs> too young for this. I'm not too young for it. There's people in the lowlands learn all this stuff all the time. I met a boy once who he learned how to fight with a sword and shield when he was 12 because they have to defend against goblins and wolves and monsters all that around here. That's what we've got to deal with. That's a good point. Um, Sentry, I remember you telling me about a girl. Um, is around this age, does she fight? No, no. She, the girl who I used to look after, she never fought at all. But she had you. I fight, I fall for her, it's my duty. <laughs> That's it, it's my duty to protect you guys and everybody exactly. around me. But what about a girl who doesn't have you? She has the priestesses and the priests. She looks at you. Like. She's like, Yusuf means well, and Yusuf does have some power, I give you that, but Corrin's not really much. He doesn't even, he can't even cast spells. He's just, I don't know really what he does. He just seems to know a lot about books and stuff. Um, I mean, you, you all fall off those, those guys, like, I should be hanging out with, I should, I'm safer with you than I am with them. And she just kind of like looks around, she scuffs her boot a little bit. We're all together. Uh, we merely had to go off to somewhere dangerous and I don't want your responsibility on my hands. What? Frankly, I go down I, all the time. Look, you don't have to worry about me, I just, I'm, I'll be fine, I can hide, right? You, just, you guys didn't see me for a, for a long time, I'll just... She's very sneaky, I'll give you that. Look, but, just... It just seems, it seems wrong to just be sat around in the woods while you're like checking out airship crashes. It's pretty cool, <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I want you to miss out on life experience. But we did also deal with, have to deal with some wolves. Fire bear. Right, so even more reason for me to learn how to fight? And she kind of like looks at you like, I'm not sure if I'm selling this, but. Sounds more like well, an extra person who would. I learned to fight younger than that. To start with, you can have this scroll. And I hand her the scroll, the one that I made the wolf check on. Do not. Like, no, this was the good one. <laughs> oh. This was the good one that was actually right about wolves. So to start with, you might need this. She takes his like... Look, thanks. you may roll your More eyes. reading. 
But that helped me just now, and I made a fire bear. Okay. She like yeah. tucks it in her belt, and she's like, I'll read it later. I could give her a sword. Her eyes widen. <laughs> she like looks like... We could not <sighs> give her a sword. I have daggers. Is that, and she points at the rapier. Is that the sword you were going to give me? It's a bit big though, see, it's just, I it's think... Such needs... a, it's such like a, a lightweight blade, right? Could we make her a practice sword at least? Yeah, maybe. That's a good idea. I have a stick. I've just found his stick. I have daggers. She Don't picks up a stick and like throws. <laughs> Correct. Does it hit me? No. Okay. Well, even that missed. I wasn't trying to hit you. Oh, that's very kind. Arakokra. Thank you. What about daggers? I have daggers. It's better than nothing. She kind of like. Don't run with them. She like shugs her shoulders and like kicks the dirt around a little bit. Dagger first, then maybe. Sword. She like looks but, up. She looks but, up. She looks at Ayla. Two daggers. But. <laughs> sure. But <laughs> I'm teaching you. Sure. She's like, yeah, you seem to know how to handle yourself. That sounds great. Maybe you and the Guardian. The Guardian knows how to fight too. Hey, knowledge yeah. is power as well. Yeah. Gonna, you need yeah, to know where swords. to hit people. You should talk to Brother Corin. You and him will get on really well, I'm sure. You say he's the spellcaster. No, he doesn't. Yusuf, the priestess Yusuf does. Right. She speaks to Siaska. She like holds her hands up. And you do see that she kind of, there's a little re reservation. Like she's, she kind of, there's a bit of respect there, but she's also a bit sort of like, mm, Look, teenager. I know book reading is boring, apparently, to some people. <laughs> no, reading some books but, is fine. But learning tactics, there is nothing bad in that because then you learn about your enemies' weaknesses and their strengths and how to exploit them. Learn by doing. Speaking of exploiting strengths and weaknesses. We're getting two very different messages, but sure, I will read the scroll if you give me the two daggers. Uh, she promise. Out. I promise. I'll give you one, and then you can read a scroll, and I'll give you the other one next. <gasps> yeah, you can have the other one. I've got another one. <laughs> it's far nicer too. She's Wait a minute. Like, yeah. like she's like eyeing these up, like, yeah, baby, I got two knives. She like puts one in her belt and she's like, now we've got more protection. She like So you're a f you're as you, as young as you are willing to fight, which is a problem that I no, she's clearly... halfway through her life, she's a human, right? Well, yes, but no well but have you just left the other three behind? They were fine. I mean I didn't have anything I could do with them. Corin's looking after Arvel. Arvel's Arvel got has his crossbow. crossbow. Fine. And Sister Yusuf Good. can conjure magic if she needs to. Um, as you guys are saying this, mm -hmm. uh, you, Quill, and who, what's your passive perception? 13. 13, yours is 14. 13. 13. What's your passive perception? Nine. And yours, Lucius? That's not even worth talking about. 11. <laughs> oh, come on. Century. 13, sorry. 13. So anybody who's got 13 or higher, you oh. hear the sound of um, coming, so you're currently like just off the side of the embankment, approaching towards the airship crash. Uh, you see more of the wild elves, like okay. rugged. They're kind of making their way. They're being cautious, but they're still causing noise. These ones look slightly different. Only a, a couple of them have longbows. Um, one of them, however, is has all sorts of like totems and fetishes hanging off like these gauntlets that they're wearing, like these bare paw gauntlets. And they're like looking around, keeping an eye. And one of them has a large hawk um, and it just whispers a few things and the hawk flies up and the hawk sees the group of you on the other oh, side. Cool. And that's Back where we're going to end. Time today. to leave. Oh, oh, no. You can't do four battles without a freaking rest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One HP. Welcome to the Lowland. Yeah. Oh. Just like that run. Yeah. If, oh. Yeah, running might be the right option. Yep. Oh, boy. Or we'll find be, out next week. Or you can yeah. play. We Val is ready again. <laughs> no uh, cool. Thanks very much for watching. We're going to read out some Donna Shons. Thank you very much. Uh, nice. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you guys all enjoyed that. And um, remember to submit some fan art if you're making any to HyrulesDnd at gmail.com. Thank you. There you go. And thank you to and our sponsors. Yes. Thank you to our sponsors, DnD Beyond, Beyond, Beyond and, and the Brilliant. solution for Brilliant, Mark. Uh, I didn't write it down, but it's on Brilliant.org. Okay. Is I, it? You can find all the answers, like basically all of the ones I read out during the break. They are based on puzzles, which you can go and check out for free. They are freely available ones on Brilliant.org, but don't forget mm. that the first 200 people to sign up will get uh, their thing. The other thing I just want to, yeah. the code for D&D Beyond to get 25% off, high rolling, and that applies to anything in your basket. 
Thank you very much to DD Beyond and Brilliant.org for being our awesome yeah. sponsors. And there's yeah. also there's links to both of them on our social media and yep. in chat as well. So Video descriptions. If you can click on those links, then that'd be great. It that helps, helps us a lot. It helps us. Thank you. The Nord's House, thank you very much. Episode two, this is going to be fun. Thank you very much for the donation. Nightjarm donated. Okay, I'm not pointing fi fingers here, but who cast Scorching Ray on the UK? Uh, Kim? Uh, anyone? <laughs> Kim? JK. I'm not a spellcaster. But if I melt during the stream, know that it was a happy death because of HR and you guys. But seriously, no. someone turn off the sun, please. I'm yeah, really yeah, yeah. that. It's warm in here. Yeah. It's so hot. Uh, Mr. Altissimo donated. Hey, hi, Rolls Crew. Won't be able to join today, so I'll be a VOD boy at later oh, boy. tonight. Got to shop for some new clothes because I've lost about 45 pounds. Oh, hey, wow. congratulations. Wow. Have a great day. Roll high. Katie, okay, take some of my way. Ah. Good work. Oh, Candid Astrius with a half hundo. Thank oh, you very much. Whoa. Use that D&D Beyond discount to load up on books for the mobile app. Already have them in Fantasy Grounds, but they lack mobile access. Anyway, figured I'd pass the savings on to you <laughs> folks for all the amazing content oh, and story. What an amazing wow. saving to make to nice. have donated uh, that amount to us. Um, das Dank has said, first time catching a stream, though I have watched every single HR video on Yogg's Live and the High Rollers D&D channel, and I am so hyped. Thanks for the hundreds of hours of entertainment and can't wait to see more of Mark's marvellous world building. Thank you very much. Mm, All around has donated with no message, but thank you very much. It's Westy has donated a thousand Twitch bits, saying, <laughs> <laughs> Craig Raid, Craig... Craig me up, Craig me up for Rhiannon. There we go. Aww. Thanks, Aww. Westy. Lovely. Uh, <laughs> Dragstar has donated saying, hello all, can't wait, can't watch today as I'm off to a viewing party for a documentary I did camera work for, so I'm mega excited. Mm. Shameless plug. Uh, 10 past 10 on channel four. Ooh, well done. Interesting, what is it? Rating. What is it? Uh, if it wasn't for High Rollers getting me through Render Hell, one out then two. I would be a gibbering mess. Sorry for the shameless plug. Cool. No worries. Wow. Uh, Pixie MLG Gamer says, Good day, Rollers. Pixie here. Come on, Rhiannon. I worked really hard to spell those names right, and you come out with Z Jing and Glenoodle. Glenoodle. I still say funny. Tom died. Glenoodle. There we are again. I'm still afterwards. I'm still loving you and your guardian druid, and really looking forward to seeing more. Love you, babe. Thanks, mate. Do you want to take over? Love you, babe. Paladin. Paladin. Oh, good. Snowy Ball. Ho ho, hi there. First time donating because I'm trying to save up money for a car, but I had to say I love you all and everything you do. Also, Tom is a bird boy, so. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for that. Nice. Uh, hashtag roll on Sunday. Thank you very much. Uh, Talwin Greenwood, thank you, Rollers, for providing great entertainment as always. Questions ahead. Since Air Ganassi can hold their breath indefinitely, can they remain in a bag of holding indefinitely? Well, they would starve, yeah. I imagine, or th die of thirst. And also, how there. can they get out? Because like, they'd have to have someone, someone to, to get them out. out. Yeah. Like, oh, there yeah. was another question there, but it's gone to... Uh, Sam can bring it back. Bring, bring it back, back to us, Sam. Bring it back. Bring it back. Uh, thank you. Uh, bring does this mean no... Oh, it, like it, yeah, damn it. Yeah. So it was. Does it mean Nova can sit in a bag of holding and act like a Pokemon? Yeah, because no. you'd have to pull well, yes, you in and go like, starving. Nova, yeah. I choose you! Yeah, and then my starving corpse would just be like... <laughs> 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 um, dancing on fire. Um, I made it this week. It's so weird to be listening to these new characters that I know so little about, but it's still so exciting. Does it feel weird for you guys, and how is being level two again? Well, uh, for some of it, was for some people, it's the first time being level two. Yeah. For Tom and Rian. For me, yeah. Yeah. it's your first time playing in general. So. Yes. Uh, it is weird playing a new character. Yeah. Being a spellcaster is weird. Just trying to get into new personalities. I Not guess. having spell slots is really. I've yeah. weirdly mm. fallen nicely into Lucius. Uh, yeah. I don't mm. know why. <laughs> it's almost like you're playing to a certain stereotype of yourself. <laughs> it's, it's very weird being a very different character that we've played for so long, I suppose. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Um, Okemian. Uh, so excited for this new campaign. This show helped me through a very difficult time after I came out as trans to my wow. family and friends, and I just want you all to know that you're all awesome, uh, especially Kim. Um, keep doing what you do, you wonderful people. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well. Yeah, congrats on um, that. And we'll do one more. Uh, Snowball, again. Uh, also, I wanted to say this last week, but holy shit, sponsors? What is this, a professional stream? Hey. Well, we're trying to make it, yeah. yeah. They only blackouts twice or three times. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there you go, Kim, you can take it away. Shale93 has donated already nine months of subscription just to watch you guys. Happy to donate something to celebrate this. You guys are amazing. Keep it up. Oh, thank you. Nice. Thank you. Nice. Uh, Azul Aura has donated. 
Uh, donating to say that as a Scot listening to Holmes trying to do a Scottish oh. accent, I don't know what that was, uh, for NPCs is kind of hilarious. They're accurate enough, but seeing someone going from a Paisley native to Glaswegian in two seconds flat is one of the highlights of the stream. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this, is the way, uh, that's, this is the way all Scottish people speak. They're from the same place, eh? I will punch you. <laughs> <laughs> a wee punch. Uh, Natalie has donated a three-part donation. Uh, howdy, oh, gang. Wee. The time has come for me to finally ask... Um, <laughs> Ask for help with the overhaul of the show's TV tropes page. It's mostly uh, it's been mostly me and occasionally a couple of others keeping it up to date. But now that the second campaign Damn. has started, it's too big uh, a project for one girl to handle. In other news, I've just started preparing for my own first campaign. I've been planning on this on running this fall when I get back to university. An ancient dwarven kingdom beset by enemies on all sides, and the players getting drawn into the conflict when they accidentally prevent an attempt on a princess's. Uh, no, sorry, when they accidentally prevent an attempt on a princess's life. Hopefully, adventure awaits. Telly her. There you go. Good so luck. if people can help out Natalie on TV, TV tropes, tropes, yeah, oh, so much appreciated. We got a half yeah. hondo from Adam Tad. Damn, well. Wow. Haven't donated since the 100th episode, so I thought it was high time to do so again. Um, thanks, Aussie Time Zones, for making this hard. <laughs> Quick thanks for you getting me uh, all getting me into d and I've, I've been running a game for over two years now, and it's been an absolute blast. Thank you very much. Nice. And another half hondo from Lord of Emus. No, Lord of Emus. Emus? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Lord of Emus. Lord of Emus. Uh, I've not been able to catch the last few streams live, including the last episode of season one and the first of season two, but I finally made it. Here's Yay. to a great season. You should definitely you watch much. those two, though. Yeah, he did, I think. Oh, he oh, said so he can watch them. Caught up. Polska Mafia 1894 donated. Hey, Rollers, first time today, but been watching since day one. Here's some of my birthday money to say thanks for all the great memories and good laughs over the years. I'm excited to watch the progression of this campaign. I can tell it's going to be good. Birthday. Thank you very much. Birthday. Birthday. Do you want me to dismiss them, Sam? I've got the ability. Oh, you're doing it. Okay. Not, not so, double zero. Evening high rollers, I couldn't catch the stream tonight, sadly. I'm on the road home from Texas and have 10 hours ahead of me. Ooh, when I get there, I'm finally excited to start some fan art for you guys. Please Sweet. do. Oh, That's yeah. me. And show some love, though. Thanks for being awesome. Awesome. Thank you very much. Awesome. Azul Aura donated. Donated again for nobody asking Quillex's name. Hashtag justice for bird boy. Nobody's no still. <laughs> it's because you're just burb. Correction, yeah. an NPC has asked him. An NPC. Yeah, but did you hear that? <laughs> No. Cali no. Pigeon Unicorn donated. Just want to say thanks for helping me discover the wonders of D&D &D and for making my time at uni a little more bearable. I haven't been able to play yet. D&D &D isn't that big in France, but hopefully that will change soon. P.S. I love your shirt, Kim. They are Thank translating you. the books into other languages. It's Month addressed. Shoes donated. Hi, Rollers. Thank you. HR introduced me to D&D &D and I'll be playing for over a year. D&D &D has given me a way to work through my anxiety issues and connect with my friends. You're all amazing and have inspired me more than you can imagine. Happy rolling. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. And well done. Hanny Becky donated. Uh, finally managing to watch live this time around. I'm working on a new HR cross stitch at the moment. Not Ooh, sure if that counts yeah. as foul. Absolutely does. Yeah. Yeah. But I'll share on Twitter when I'm done. Share it to the highrollers high 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 at gmail.com. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, yeah. I'm more loving it so far, and here's to many more weeks of fun. Many I mean, years. by all means, share it on yeah. social media as well. Yeah, yeah. 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 And we still well. have so the tag on it. Tumblr is still hashtag roll, roll on, on Sunday. Sunday. Um, I do occasionally check the other ones as well. but. If you want it included in the video, like Chris says, just... It's to make know. sure that you know that we're going to use it. Yeah, multiple. on Twitch and on YouTube. Yes, and you're okay with that. And that's basically consent. Yeah. Metamanu donated a quarter hundo. Law, law, law everywhere. Please don't die. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of law. I'll do one Was. more. Token Canadian donated a half hundo. Wow. Thank, you. Thank you. I love you guys so much. I've been here since day one, so I self-claim the oldest Canadian fan. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for getting me through my A-levels. Hashtag dyslexia is hard. And thank you, Mark, for inspiring me to get back into DMing after fourth edition said no. Oh, I, like I love four. you all. Thank you so much, Token Canadian. Oh, Sorry, I'm not yawning at you Self-claimed oldest oh, Canadian. God, you got me. <laughs> oh. There you go. Nice. Uh, Davides donated $10. No, one one above what about that one? Yeah, Sophie oh, yeah. first. Seth1126 donated $25 and says, Hi Rollers, sadly missed donating for the first episode last week, but I'm back to donate this week. Thank you very the much. adventure has been great so far. Uh, there is something about low level campaigns that's somehow really appealing to me. Keep <laughs> up the good work, guys. It's pretty good. Yeah. Pretty cool. uh, Davide used donated edge. $10. I'm halfway through and this is the break, but as always, great episode. Lovely art as well. P.S. Hi Rollers equals fantastic thing to watch while I paint my Warhammer stuff, so that yeah. is a plus. Thank yeah. you very much. Uh, Bandai, Nenza, Bandai Nenze donated to Pope Dollars and said, Hi, roller, hello, rollers. Didn't get to donate last week, so here's my well wishes today. 
thoroughly enjoyed the first episode. I love all the new characters. Welcome to the crew, Rhiannon. Thank you very much. Uh, loving you and Robo Mum's antics. Hyped for what's in store for campaign two. Hug. Thank oh, you very much. Thanks, Bendo. Uh, he's one for trot. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> Do you want to read it? Do I? Yeah. Do you? Do I? Do I? Yeah. yeah. Jerking off to trot. Has to an edge. In spirit of last week, I've tried to make another limerick about Mark. The highest dice you shall roll to. Make it your goal. Mark is the dice dad. Makes girls go mad. Put a D4 <laughs> up my dick hole. Thank you, jerking off to trot. Thanks for reading the limerick as well. Thank you. All oh, right. You can carry on, Rhiannon, there. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, so Verica donated five dollars and said that the setting and the characters just keep getting better. Don't have much more to say. Just wanted to throw money at you. Fire bear. Fire bear. Fire bear. Fire bear. Yeah. Uh, Kiki2108 donated $10 and no meshes, but thank you. I'll very take much. this one. Okie dokie. Joking off to shot, donated again, thank you. Alright, one limerick for Tom then, too. Tom sits on one of the seats, making hard my manly meat. My manly meat. <laughs> Such a beautiful boy with a dick to destroy. Please pull out my anal beats. Beats. <laughs> no, it says beats. Yeah. <laughs> Might be a misspell. There you go. Thank you, Joe. What, what, what are you relation to? Ace of Thorns Nothing. has donated. He's sitting here. Grounded. <laughs> Oops, sorry, bird boy. Time to shape up or ship out. Yeah. Oops, souls again. Oh, yeah. Guess I better just sit back and watch the magic unfold. Fire bear, anybody? P.S. Kim, look fine. P.P.S. Century. <laughs> beep boop. Beep boop. Yeah. Look fine, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> one. Sky Silverwing donated. First time donating this campaign. I must say, I was a bit disappointed that there wasn't a critical role style with Battle Royale at the end of the Lightfall campaign. Laura winning, winning is not a given since the others know how badass she is. Yeah, they know how badass she is. They have no doesn't way of countering her. it. No. Like. Juto doesn't have enough hit points. Reynard would get fucked. Oh, like, you have to try and hit me though. But once you turn uh, into anything, spells away. though, man. I don't know. Like hmm? once you turn into anything, you'd then be my favorite enemy. No. no. Would you not? No. Well, no. Your no. favorite enemy is giants or dragon. Yeah. And oh, dragon. dragon. It's monstrosities and beasts as well. Giants, monstrosities, beasts. Yeah, but then it depends. Like an elemental isn't one of those things. Yeah. Oh, yeah, but if she turns into elemental, I just also enjoy. look. Allura would win. Also, she, she has eight levels. Would not win. Yeah. We had a long a WhatsApp conversation she about this. Win. Anyway, she wouldn't win. She Joking wouldn't off win. the trot, donated again. My lady rollers don't feel offended that I don't really make limericks not. about you. <laughs> so one more for the boys. On a late night, it was hot. Three men make a pact and nod. One man was cucked while the other two fucked. Their names were Mark, Tom, and Trump. <laughs> That's the best one you've done so That's far. Really That's the best one so far. Yeah. Uh, Varys donated. Thank you very Jesus. much. No message. Nightingale. <laughs> Is that the song of Cause People? I didn't even think about that. Thank you very much. Oh, Darth Day yeah. 41. I brought it up pretty much straight away, yeah. didn't I? <laughs> Build a homemade airship as a side quest. Nothing could possibly go wrong. 10 out of 10 for Tom going the extra mile on only using one arm to not ruin our immersion. Yeah, I have it tucked around the back I know as you well. do, I know. Uh, and then I'll read one more. Mm -hmm. Nidus the Black Flame Dragon. Uh, this is definitely old enough to learn of the great Fire Bear. Also, we need a Fire Bear merch. The chat would eat it up. Wow. I think like Echo and maybe Fire Bear then. Like, I know people want an Echo plush as well. At most you're getting an emote. are a nightmare though. Yeah. yeah. At best um, you're getting an emote. Yeah. Uh, Zephyr mm. one has donated saying, my donation, my donation was missed last time. It might be in the VOD though, because we did stay mm -hmm. extra yeah. and yeah. read all yeah. of them in the VOD. So please check the VOD. Um, I just wanted to extend another very warm welcome to Rhiannon. Loving the campaign so far. Fingers crossed Arville continues to slowly evolve into Bodega. Lots of love, your old pal, Zephyr. Not Thank everybody you. that has a Texan accent is Bodega. Yeah. Like, Texan accents existed before Bodega. Mark loves they Texan just, accents. They just wish for it to be Bodega. Yeah. Yeah, also, yeah. I'm pretty sure we did read your message, but it was we cut did. off yeah. in the VOD when I put it into the edit, so um, yeah. it might have been missed in the oh, VOD. Right. Oh. Live on YouTube. But we did read so everything. I definitely read your message, though, Zephyr. Uh, I remember that. Yeah. Stonehenge Ray has donated saying, Roll on Sunday. In today's episode, Lucius said Daddy a total of 10 times. And out of the 24 people in the chat who took part, Sagesh was the closest with their guess of 12. Is there a betting now? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Special thanks Betty to Mrors47 for helping me keep track. Thank you very much. Does Daddy anybody Daddy. want to do Daddy the... check. Daddy the... Go for it. Thomas. Uh, I don't do it just Awkward this. dog boner. Boner News Live on Channel 69! No. Clan Clan Anus Elves <laughs> in the continent of Subona attacks grounded party on the way to Guffhaven while searching for the daddy's massive trunk. In other news, local wildlife indignated by reports of fire bears. Hashtag bone on Sunday. I like, I like this new format. The new format. If we're going for boner news, news, that's 10 out of 10. Boner news. 69. Um, 
And I suppose I'll take this one. The final yeah. one is Yoshi213. Hey guys, second time I can catch you live and I plan to continue this streak for as long as possible. Hope you guys have a good week and see you all next Sunday. By the way, my shirt drop. Thanks. It is good. Catch you like Jim. It. Cool. Cool. Well, Thank that you. is it. Thank you very much to everyone who donated. Thank you very much to everybody who watched. Thank you very much to our amazing sponsors, D and D Beyond and Brilliant Dog. Thank yes. you to my players. Thank you to myself for being me. Thank, Thank you, you. Yeah. Sam for fixing. Thank, Thank you, you for Sam yes. for covering the stream. I'm going to go um, home and watch World's Tiniest Masterpieces on Channel Four. Is that uh -huh. what the show was? <laughs> yeah. uh, that is your plug. <laughs> we will be back next week, I believe. We, we do not have Rihanna next week. So you're on holiday. On holiday. We may or we may, may not have not Katie. We're not sure. So we'll figure out what we're doing. Yes. <laughs> also, World Cup final. Possibly. Yes, possibly. We'll see. We'll see. Is it coming home? No. Who knows? It's coming home! Bye. 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 Bye.